Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Sam Adams. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin. These men spoke up for what they thought was right. From their courage came such documents as the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. From their willingness to speak what was sometimes unpopular but right, we enjoy such liberties as freedom of speech, the right to keep and bear arms, and freedom of religion. There are those who still wish to oppress our freedoms, and there are still patriots willing to stand up and defend life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Men like Zeb Bell, who honor our founding fathers and what they stood for. It's now time for Zeb at the ranch, speaking up and defending your freedoms. Brought to you by Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers and all of the other great advertisers on the program. And now, Zeb Bell. You know, think about this just for a moment. If you can get arrested for hunting or fishing without a license, why not for being in this country illegally. Think about it. Callers, good morning. We'll take your calls. You better believe that we enjoy that. Here comes Kate Smith and God Bless America, followed by a patriot with our Pledge of Allegiance on a Wednesday. I love that lady's voice. Always will. Kate Smith and God bless America on a Wednesday. And boy, we sure need to get on bended knee and ask for his blessings. Uh, I'm Zeb Bell. Zeb at the Ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you along with some of our great advertisers. Lee's Furniture Floors and more at 459 Overland in Burley. And our friends at Western Way Services always at your disposal. Get on the garbage route, sir. Get rid of your garbage. Call them at 734-6969. You know, I'm tired and I think I want my crackers and milk early so I can take a nap. Good morning, Gina. I'm right there with you. We'll have our, uh, can, can it be animal crackers? I love animal crackers. <laughs> I love them. I'll go grab my boy and we can talk. You know, I would fight your little seven-year-old son for a box of his animal crackers. Ever since I was a little bitty guy, I love animal crackers. I like to sit there and soak them in milk. Frosted or unfrosted? Oh, i got to have uh, the unfrosted. The unfrosted? Okay, me too. I don't like the frosted ones, but the unfrosted, oh, buddy. Oh, you know what? I tell you what, now I'm, I'm making a note. And <laughs> Christmas is right around the corner, and you are going to get a, not just a little puny box, you're going to get a whole great big <laughs> shipment. Animal crackers for Gina. Animal okay. crackers and milk. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're not going to believe a story that I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes, and we're going to have a, a kind of a real rush through some of the news, because I've got a question I want to ask the people in Burley, and uh, we're going to get to that in just a few minutes. Do we have a pleasure? Who are you or Michael? You know, what is the matter? Some of these people aren't getting out of bed in the morning. We've got to have that I changed. Know. Yeah. I know. Kill man, come on. Uh, yeah. Where are you? All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's have Michael do it this morning. You got it. All right. Thanks. Hello, Michael. Yeah, go ahead. Do the pledge. Okay. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. For all. Ah, thank you, Michael. And right now it's time for MichaelRogersWeather.com, and it's brought to us by some really, really nice folks. Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. I want to get these people back on the air. Man, they do so much. Uh, all the hardwood laminates, vinyl sheeting, uh, carpet cabinets, all the countertops, everything. Just call them at 678-6945, and they say and they guarantee they can meet or beat any price on flooring and in the Magic Valley, you give them a call. Free in-house consultation. Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for their blue door. And right now, here is Michael Rogers' weather. Bill, did you know you had a radio fan up here in Alaska and listened to your show on the Internet? Did you know that? No, but uh, tell them I said hello. 
Well, he's probably listening to you right now. Why don't you say hello to him? All right, Alaska radio fan, good morning from southern Idaho. Hope you have a great day. There you go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Sunny and hot again today. That pays me to do this. And, you know, it's like, I don't know why. There's nothing really else to tell you. It's going to be sunny and hot. 97 for the high. You might see a thunderstorm. I doubt it, but... We'd be surprised if one fired up on you. Other than that, uh, you know, stay like this um, all the way through the weekend. I always add about two degrees for the temperature. So if you hit to 100 today, wouldn't surprise me because that's how Idaho weather is. But other than that, that's your weather day. It is the only weather you got. Thank you, MichaelRogersWeather.com, and calling in from Alaska. Good morning, and thanks again to Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for their blue door. Oh, I talked to Dave Zanino a little bit earlier. They've got a big team open tonight at the Jerome County Fair, and it's the series, and it starts with a sign-up at 6.30, rope at 7. Three for 20 draw pot. Everybody try to be there, and we'll find out the results tomorrow morning. Hey, by the way, uh, I want to also mention to you our friends, holy smokes, I just knocked over everything. Just about knocked over the water, too. That was close. Attaboy, Zebra. Real handy. Uh, friends over to Rudder Showcase, 2611 Overland and Burley. They're having this week and next week a great big annual tent sale. But you know what? For your convenience, the tents are going to be inside the store where it's cool at 2611 Overland and Burley. And they're going to have all kinds of money saved on Whirlpool, Maytag, Amena Appliances, huge selection of Staten Furniture, all made in America, and 12 months, same as cash on approved credit. You better get in there today to Redder Showcase, 2611 Overland in Burley. Also, real quick, I want to remind everybody about uh, any farmers out there that are uh, growing sugar beets. Listen, because BASF is introducing Preaxor from BASF, the newest form of chemistry for sugar beets to fight disease and potentially increase yield and sugar content for your sugar beets. Mm -hmm. Preaxor contains headline and a new compound, Xenium, that also provides excellent control of pottery mildew. That's right. And like I said, with the application of BASF's Preax or 45 to 60 days prior to harvest, you have the potential of higher yields and more sugar content in your sugar beets. Contact your local ag chemical supplier today or call BASF's Ron Ellis. What a nice guy. 431-6776 or Tim Perry at 844-0682. BASF's Preax or for your better sugar beets. Okay, here's what we're going to do this morning. A little change, and we're going to real quick go through the news. And uh, then I've got a question at the bottom of the hour I want you to call in on. I want your, it's kind of a survey question this morning at about 831, so give us a call. First and foremost, we're going to get right into this with Bo Bergdahl. Uh, we're looking at a potential big, big scandal again against the Obama administration. Bergdahl has lawyered up, but... But here's the caveat. His lawyer is very well known and not for the betterment of you and I and American citizens. The guy's name is Eugene Fidel. I hope I said that correctly. If not, I'll stand corrected. Eugene Fidel. And he is very famous for supporting every enemy combatant that comes to him and their rights that they say have been altered or diminished at Gitmo, Guantanamo Bay. Ooh, this is bad. And this man is also the head of the National Institute of Military Justice. So here's what's happened in the past. This attorney, Eugene Fidel, has supported enemy combatants' rights, and now he's going to be representing Bo Bergdahl. You put the lines and the dots together. This morning, Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer said, there is evidence that cannot be denied to keep Bergdahl under lock and key and in a cell now, not back on active duty. 
They have found a letter that was from 2009 from Bergdahl that absolutely condemned the Army, condemned being there, and uh, I'm telling you that uh, this man, Lieutenant Colonel Tony Schaefer, said Bergdahl is as bad, I'm using his words now, paraphrasing his words this morning, is as bad as the charges that were brought up and passed on Bradley Manning as anti-American activities. Okay? What's going to happen? We'll have to wait and see. And I still think, and I'll be more than happy to stand behind this statement, the White House and this administration will whitewash this whole situation. Don't forget July 18th coming up, and that's, of course, going to be on this Friday. And at your Valley Wide Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida, in Rupert, your local home and ranch store, they've got all kinds of great, great savings for the 4-H uh, members that want to get in there and save 10% off on project supplies and supplements and all kinds of great savings on buckets and savings on propane cylinders and propane and... Uh, I'm telling you, just get in there. It's going to be fantabulous. And 10% uh, off the projects and supplies and supplements. And don't forget all your hunting and fishing licenses there and your fishing equipment. Boy, what a store. What a store. And also, they're going to have uh, from 11 to 2 burgers for a buck. And the proceeds going to the local 4-H chapter at Valley Wine Home and Ranch, 910 South Oneida in Rupert, coming up on this Friday. Also, our thanks go out naturally to our dear friends at Ramsey Heating and Electric at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. Another day of possible triple digits. You heard Michael say we might get up to 100 degrees again today, and your air conditioner is sitting there going, trying to hum along and keep you cool. But if your air filter is dirty, it can't do an efficient job. So stop into Ramsey Heating and Electric and get a brand new air filter, and you are going to stay cool. Big smile on your face. You better believe it. Stop into Ramsey Heating and Electric at 26. Overland Avenue in Burley, 6780459, where they provide warm winters and cool summers. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yes, good morning, Zeb. I have a, co uh, a question for you this morning. Okay. Now, the, uh, from what I understand, we are spending billions of dollars to beef up the Mexican army. Ah, uh, yes. I was going to get into that. Mexican army on the border to mm -hmm. stop this un influx of uh, people into our country. If they're supposedly uh, being supported by, that their army is supported by us. Yeah. You know, here's the thing, Tony. I was not aware of this. I, I was not aware that we are giving Mexico over $15 million a year for support of their Mexican military. And I'm asking, like a lot of people are asking, now that this has become uh, public, why? Why are we doing the help to them for their own military? Well, the thing of it is, uh, it looks to me like... Uh, uh, they're in for the same problem, the same thing that the terrorists are and the drug themselves, and that's just the overthrow of the American government, and they're, they're part of the uh, scheme to take us down. Yeah. Did you happen to hear, i got to ask you this question real fast, did you happen to hear Harry Reid yesterday? I honestly yeah. agree, I agree with Charles Krauthammer. I think that Harry Reid absolutely is off of his medication, he's gone completely nuts, he should not be anything to do with the Senate right now, because he was very emphatic yesterday, and he said that the border is secure. Well, let me just give a closed circuit message to Harry Reid on how stupid this this man is, then how come all of a sudden we ended up with 50,000 plus kids illegally coming in from other countries if the border's secure, Harry Reid? Well, I think maybe what his problem was, he may have been talking about the property who lives on the secure from the terrorists. 
I don't know. So, I don't know. The guy's out of it. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the Democrats are out of it. And I'm going to be very partisan about this because, my gosh, what is the matter with these people? We've got uh, a mess on the border with medication and with housing and with food. And the Border Patrol is acting like babysitters. And Harry Reid says something so pronounced stupid, the border is secure. Yeah. Well, we're going to be, uh, these, these invaders that have uh, hit our country are going to break us economically. And the second thing that's going to happen is uh, amnesty comes along. Uh, we're going to lose the country at the ballot box. I agree. I agree. Tony, always good to hear from you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. God bless you, man. Thanks. Uh, there's a add-on to this story, and I want to get into that in just a minute. And uh, I'm going to tell Gina this. She's not going to believe this aspect of it unless she's been following the news. Don't forget your friends at Barry Equipment and Rental, and they've been in business over 30 years in the Magic Valley, and they've got all the big heavy equipment items you need to get the job done. That's right, the man lifts, skid steers, excavators. They've got all the tillers mowers, all the lawn and garden stuff. They've got the Doosan loaders. They've got Bobcat. They've got everything over there. All you have to do is stop in. Three locations. And of course, they're located on South Lincoln and Jerome. They're located on Addison Avenue West in Twin Falls and 159 West Highway 30 in Burley. Barry Equipment and Rental. You be sure and stop in and work with the pros on all your equipment needs at Barry Equipment and Rental. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Yes, I was wondering if you heard uh, Paul Rodriguez's comment on uh, this illegal immigration problem. I did. I and did. I thought he was very succinct, and uh, maybe we need somebody like him running our country and do that thing we got in the White House now. Well, you know, I, I have lost all my support. If there ever was any for the presidential office, the Oval Office, and respect for this presidency, uh, Obama absolutely has not done anything for five and a half years. And there are reports right now, there are reports from insiders at the White House that he is bored and absolutely looking for other opportunities to do anything but be president. Boy, that doesn't give you a warm, fuzzy feeling. Doesn't? Well, what I'm saying, he did do something. He's trying to destroy this country in any way, fashion, or fashion possible. Well, did you hear about the ads in the papers down in California in a couple of areas? This is really going to frost your cake this morning. Yeah, there are ads in certain papers, newspapers in California, that are appealing for households to take in illegal alien children. And in the ad, it says you will be paid over $6,000 per month. Over $6,000 per month. That's over seventy grand a year. And that the kids that you take in, the government is going to pay for their health care. What do you think about that? It doesn't surprise me, and I'm sure that Obama is up behind it 110 percent. I agree. As he's already stated, we need to take care of the world at our expense, and it's our responsibility, but you know as well as I do, there's no way we can. I agree. And, and you know what else makes me just really livid and mad about this? For anybody that answers that ad and supposedly is checked out and they're going to start housing some of these illegal kids, that money that they receive is tax-free. Well, that's what I'm going for you. Amen. We share all this money that's ours, not just mine or yours, but ours, everybody's, and he's throwing it away like it's... Basically candy. I agree with you, and thank you so much for your call. I, I just I have no respect for this office of the presidency whatsoever. This administration absolutely doing everything against the law and against our, our Constitution. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Well, the only comment I have to that is uh, don't feel like the Lone Ranger, Tonto. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Appreciate it. No, I, I read you. this. It was on television earlier this morning, and I did some follow-up on this. And they are in certain parts of California, L.A., Bakersfield, around the area. They are running ads in papers looking for households to take in 
and illegal alien children at over $6,000 a month. And uh, the kids are going to get government paid health care. And it's under the title in the newspaper, here's the headline on the ad, Help Heal the Wounds. And then the money that's paid to those households that take in the illegals, um, that's tax free. But now wait a minute, let's back up the bus a minute here. Wasn't the supposition that these kids, these illegal alien children, coming in here, were coming here to stay with aunts and uncles and they had family here and everything, now they're putting out ads to house them in other households? Ay, 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 what a mess. What a mess. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget Denny's Restaurant at 611 Overland and Burley. Oh, the gift card. Somebody asked me about that yesterday. And yes, what a great gift to give somebody that you love is hungry and they're looking for a great place to go eat. Tell them to go to Denny's. As a matter of fact, don't tell them. Just give them a gift card and they'll be hooked. Absolutely a wonderful place to go eat. Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland and Burley, the home of Seb's Lunch Bunch. Our next Lunch Bunch, we changed the date this month for July. It's going to be on the 31st, Thursday the 31st. Don't miss that. You're going to love it. they got specials for seniors. they got a great menu, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And, of course, Thomas and the whole crew, Terry, everybody taking care of you at Denny's Restaurant, 611 Overland in Burley. Really good folks. All right, your turn. Give us a call. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Um, Let's see. I wanted to talk a little bit about something else. Oh, this is this is what I was going to talk to Gina about. I tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, I want to do the Capital Press Ag Minute, and then I'm going to talk to Gina about something that's taking place in our supermarkets, and it's going to become nationwide before too long. Stand by, caller. Go ahead. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, sir. You know, I was watching TV last night, and I seen something that, honest to God, what happened to child abuse laws in this state of the United States? I seen pictures of kids in cells, in cages, worse than what these dog pounds have. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's getting too damn ridiculous, and I want to see a stop to it. Okay, but now wait a minute. Al, I'm not trying to play devil's advocate with you, but what are we going to do? For one thing, Boehner, you took some away for the IRS. Take money away for this person where he can't pull all this crap. Put people on the border to take care of it and feed them people, take them people back down where they come from because all you're doing is abusing them up here worse than it was down there. I couldn't agree more. I saw pictures uh, that I don't think we were supposed to see. As a matter of fact, they've been trying to limit the amount of press and publicity and pictures coming out of these holding centers. But I saw those little kids crying and one little boy looking at the camera and then bowing his head down and tears running down his cheeks and I thought this you caused Obama this is your fault this is your administration's way of trying to increase the fold to vote Democratic shame on you I know I mean you know yourself Jeff I will help anybody anytime I can but my lord I'm getting pushed to the point where I've got to start taking care of myself and my wife and to see something like this it tears my heart out because we're not supposed to treat people like this. I never have been like that. And when I see that going on and this president is getting away with it, I want to know what is wrong with Boehner. Why isn't he doing his job? And why don't Harry Reid resign and go back to Nevada where he can kick mesquite around? I can't argue that, but I guess maybe I could be a little flip and say, uh, okay, Al, I know you're stressed, I'm stressed, everybody's becoming stressed. Maybe we should answer those letters in the paper and take in some of these kids at $6,000 per month per child and get the tax-free money that they're offering in the state of California. I can't do that, Jeff. There's no way in hell I can do that. I know. I'm too, I know. Far, I'm too far along in ages to be able to take care of kids anymore. That just got to be put up to these people. I mean, they've got to use common sense for hell's sake. Oh, now, wait a minute. That's an oxymoron. That's an oxymoron. The government and common sense. Please, don't go there. That'll never happen. Well, I'm trying to 
straighten it up a little bit. Okay. Al, God bless. Have a good day. Thank you have so much. Thank you. We're going to have the Capitol Press Act Minute. I'll be right back. Don't go away. Today's Ag Minute brought to you by the Capitol Press, the West Ag Weekly. Agricultural colleges throughout the country have enjoyed increasing enrollment in recent years, but most administrators acknowledge their programs can't keep pace with the growing number of job openings. And in many cases, the number of students enrolled in the disciplines where many of the opportunities are has been stagnant. Ag employers report a shortage of qualified applicants in many fields and worry competition for workers will only intensify. In addition to high pay and strong demand, educators say ag students enjoy the challenge of specialized scientific work. They say students haven't been informed of the opportunities and have been mistakenly led to believe that career opportunities are shrinking. For the Capital Press Ag Minute, this is Brandon Tenner. For more agriculture news and information, turn to the West Ag Weekly, the Capital Press, and CapitalPress.com. Oh, my goodness, are they having fun up at Oakley this week? It's the Oakley Pioneer Days, a flood of blessings, and it goes all the way through Saturday. Don't miss a minute of it. They just finished up last night with the four-cylinder car race, the bump and rub. Tonight, they've got a huge gym cannon starting at 6 o'clock. And then Friday and Saturday, great big IMPRA rodeo, dancing, fire works, all kinds of goodies, basketball, volleyball tournaments, huge parade on Saturday, all of this and more, a flood of blessings going on at Oakley Pioneer Days in Oakley, Idaho. Don't you miss it. Now, there's some merchants, too, up there at Oakley that say, hey, come on up and celebrate with us. And uh, those merchants include Clark's for Shopping at 100 East Main in Oakley. They've always got something in the store for you, including their famous breakfast sausage from Grandma's Restaurant be either bulk patties or links. Uh, come on in and look at all the history right there for Oakley at Clark's for Shopping, 100 East Main Street in Oakley. Speaker of the House Scott Bedke and Representative Scott Bedke, rancher in Oakley, invite you all to come on up to the best celebration in Idaho, the Oakley Pioneer Days, July 15th through the 19th. Something there for everyone. Celebrating 127 years, Scott Bedke, Speaker of the House, says come on to the Oakley Pioneer Days. And last but not least, Searles at 106 North Center Street in Oakley. They're open from 6 in the morning until 9 at night, and they bake those specialty buns. Oh, they're fresh every day and delicious. Gas, grub, and goodies. Best burgers and fries anywhere at Searles, 106 North Center in Oakley. Really, really nice people. Calls are welcome and appreciated at 436 227 Give me a call. Gina, this is going to drive you up the wall, I think. Um, but uh, did you hear what they're doing now in certain supermarkets as a test? Um, are we talking about uh, what the USDA is proposing? With the shopping carts that talk to you? I think that's the dumbest thing ever. There's, what's going to happen, folks, and I'm going to say this real quick because I want to get to some of the subject matter here this morning. Um, in certain supermarkets, as a test case, here's what they're going to be doing. They are going to be introducing shopping carts that talk to you, and when you put a certain product and stop by a certain product that you want, it's going to go, do you really think you need that? And when you get to something more healthy, they're going to be talking to you about good choice, good choice. I think this is absolutely ridiculous. Remember here about six months ago, we were talking, Gina, about how sooner or later somebody's going to be standing at the cash register and they're going to be looking at your purchases and they're going to be condemning you in front of everybody as to whether that's a smart choice or not. That is coming. You can bet on it. You, you can. And I was uh, reading, I don't know if it was the exact story that you were reading or not, but they, I, I, the gist of this particular issue is is they're trying to get those who are on food stamp assistance to buy healthier, which, hey, you know what? I'm all for that. You don't need to create talking shopping carts to do that. You just place a restriction on what people can buy with 
said food stamps, that you and I are paying for. Yeah, but there's another aspect of this. Did you read about the lighting? They're going to change the lighting yeah. in some of the supermarkets. Yes. What okay. they're going to do is, according to what I had, and it was given to me by another private person also yesterday back in Washington, is they're going to enhance the lighting so it's more brilliant and it's more aesthetically comfortable to buy cauliflower and broccoli than it is to go get maybe some Keebler's cookies. Exactly. It's all about the lighting and uh, placement and color scheme. <laughs> Isn't this ridiculous? What happened to our freedom of choice? We don't have freedom of choice. They give, they give us the options that they want us to choose from. Uh, this is so crazy, but yet it's coming indoctrination and total control. Indoctrination and total control. And, and I got another story for you. You're not. Did you hear about the float in Nebraska? What? Oh, listen to float this. In Nebraska. I'm googling. Okay. So All right. Yeah. July Fourth parade in Nebraska. Now listen to this. The 4th of July parade float in Nebraska showed a mannequin wearing an Obama mask standing in front of an outhouse, and the words on the outhouse said, Obama Presidential Library. Okay? <laughs> I see the picture. Now, okay, but wait a minute. It gets worse. 95% of the people that were watching this parade loved it. And as a matter of fact, they voted that float the best float in the parade. And one person, a lady by the name of Glory Katharimia, a black woman living in Norfolk, got all upset said she was outraged and disgusted by the float and ashamed that her daughter had witnessed this and she filed a complaint but it doesn't end there it doesn't no. end there no, the department not. of justice and eric yeah. holder are going to investigate this on a poll but it really okay whoa 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 back up that's what they're going to waste our money on there you go honestly now let me just throw this at you my dear Remember Ronald Reagan masks that came out years ago about Halloween? Yes. Okay, remember the Bill Clinton masks? Uh, and the Hillary mask. And the Hillary mask. And remember the tragedy of when George Bush's mask came out and how it was connected to various things, you know, and various cartoons mm -hmm. and mannequins and Democrats. In San Francisco, they organized different parade floats with George Bush's mask and everything. That was okay. That was okay. But now this Obama presidential library of a mannequin wearing an Obama mask standing out in front of the Obama presidential library, this is being investigated by the Department of Justice and Eric Holder as racist. Oh, I'm tearing my hair out over this. I can't believe this. Well, number one, of course, it's a float in a parade. Number two, we have the right of free speech and the, and, and the right of creativity. Number four, really, Department of Justice and Eric Holder, this is a waste of our taxpayer dollars. Please focus on something that's a little bit more um, in tune of national security, say, Border Patrol. I absolutely, and I'm sitting here toying with the idea, seriously. Right behind me, and Gina, if you got your camera on, you can see that I still have not moved the Obama mask that I had during the Christmas season with the Santa Claus hat on it. Oh, yeah. You can see it behind my right shoulder. Mm -hmm. I'm not taking it down. I will oh. never be coerced and forced to take this down. But what really got me is that a gentleman by the name of Rick Konopasek told the Lincoln, Nebraska Journal Star the float was intended to be no more offensive than a political cartoon. He said the outhouse was the most popular float in the parade and that it earned honorable mention from three judges but one person one person got offended and turned this over to the NAACP and other groups and then Eric Holder with the DOJ the Department of Justice this is completely insane it's a waste of my taxpayer dollars period point blank absolutely anyway I had to tell you that I, well thank you uh,
Absolutely nuts. All right, calls are welcome, 436. Dude, boy, I've got a lot of things I could say about this float. I think we all ought to build one of those floats and have it in every fair parade as a protest about the insanity of the Department of Justice, Eric Holder, and politically being correct. Okay? Snyder Surplus, oh, we were over there for the grand opening. These are such wonderful people, and it's not just a military surplus anymore. They have everything for you, and they're located at 112 South, 200 West of Rupert. Brand new store. They had a tremendously terrible fire, and they rebuilt everything, and believe me, they got a beautiful brand new store, brand new merchandise, friendly service serving you at 112 South, 200 West of Rupert. Stop over and see them today. They are open 9 to 5, Monday through Friday, 9 to 1 on Saturdays, Snyder's Surplus, wonderful people, Lou and Tammy, the whole crew, serving you, okay. Calls are welcome and appreciated, 436-224-1866-927-4587. By the way, we started uh, delivering cinnamon rolls to our clients, and we made a great, great uh, deal with Sophie's Chatterbox, and what a wonderful bakery they have over there at Sophie's Chatterbox, 530 East Street on the Square in Rupert. That bakery with wedding cakes, cookie bars, homemade bread, delicious cinnamon rolls, and what a great place to have breakfast, lunch, or supper. Open Monday through Friday, 6 to 6, Saturdays and Sundays, 6 to 2. Sophie's Chatterbox, it is phenomenal. 530 East Street on the Square in Rupert. Calls are welcome at 436-224-1866-927-4587. There has been a lot of press lately as to whether or not Burley needs an airport. That's it, plain and simple. Does Burley really need an airport? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play very neutral on this this morning, and I'm going to ask you to call me at 436-2244 and 1-866-927-4587 and voice your opinion. Does Burley need an airport, really, when we have a regional airport in Twin Falls area? So I want you to call. I'm not, I don't have any animosity against me. I'm just asking the question, does Burley need an airport? Now, the Times News this morning ran an editorial, an op-ed editorial, that said no. No, Burley does not need an airport. And uh, instead of investing all the money into a new airport, and uh, according to them, stop squandering federal, state, and local tax dollars and accept reality. And then at the bottom of the story, it says, no, they don't need one. Just let it go. I'm going to ask you folks to call, and I'll take a little survey on this. Does Burley need an airport, or would you support another airport? We have another call. Good morning. You're on the air. Um, I guess I'm just curious what's going on with the old land that the old airport is, or the airport is sitting on right now. And can they look into if anybody has something to gain that is trying to push this airport through? Because it just seems like this airport is being pushed and pushed and pushed. And it just makes you wonder if there's something else that's going on where where somebody has something to gain. All right. Now, I'm going to do something normally different than what I normally do on these kind of issues. Instead of me stating my opinion right up front, and I think a lot of people know my opinion on this, I'm going to ask you the question again, and you brought up an excellent point. But are you in favor of keeping and maintaining or building a new Burley Airport, or like the op-ed said this morning, let it go? What's your vote? Well, um, my daughter plays baseball over there, and I'm sure a lot of people saw that this year. They can't maintain the airport we have. It looks like crap. Okay. I mean, it just looks horrible, embarrassing. What's a new airport going to do? All right. Maintain the old airport. All right. I, I, I will take you as a uh, vote. No, thank you no. very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. God bless. Have a good day. Call it. Go ahead. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, another thing, who's ever behind all this stuff, I have to say, this planning board over there, you just keep letting them build on the uh, runways where they come off the airport there. You keep building hospitals and beauty shops and all that stuff. Whatever happened to the right of way of that airplane taking off when you're taking away its restricted areas? 
All right, now, uh, again, I appreciate your opinion on this, Al, but I'm asking the question, are you in support of the Burley Airport or a new Burley Airport? Just give me a yes or a no. We don't need a new airport. Just use the one you got and use common sense and quit building around it. All right, I appreciate your call. Thank you. More calls. Come on, I want to see how many we can get in in the next 15 minutes. Uh, the op-ed piece this morning was extremely specific about not having an airport uh, maintained in the Burley area. So give me a call. Let me know. Do we, you or anyone, do you really want and or need a Burley airport? Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Uh, I've never seen the airport built. Uh, I beg your pardon. Say that again. I said I've never seen the airport built. You want to see a new airport built? Is that what you said? Yes, sir. All right. I've got you down as a yes. I appreciate your call. Now, quickly, quickly, why are you supporting a new airport? Give me a real quick reason. Well, we need it for one, several reasons, so we don't have to have to travel through the Twin Falls to the airport. All right. I respect that, and we'll put you down as a yes. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Have a good day. Bye. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, we need a new airport like we need a hole in the head. I'm assuming that's a no. <laughs> okay. Give me your reason. right by us. They want to build a chicken processing plant. They don't need a damn airport. All right. All right, sir. Appreciate your call. As always, I appreciate everybody's call. Thank you. Uh, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. No. And the reason? The reason? I think there's... The two cities, Hayward, or I mean, Rupert and Burley, they're acting like a bunch of spoiled brats. They won't do anything together. I'm better than you are. And it's no. Absolutely no. All right. Well, Helen, appreciate your call. Thank you so much. Uh, more calls are welcome. 436-2244-1866-927-4587. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. No, that's just me. Ah, I thought you uh, were the next caller. I heard breathing over there. Yes, that, that was me. I'm. I, this is my answer. Yes, I would be in favor of a new airport because if, if people are truly, really concerned about commerce in this community, then they will build a new airport because this one, get rid of the old one. Okay, well, now let me that's ask, let me add something without really giving my definitive opinion on this. What okay. about areas, and, and I think I know this area probably better than most because I do a lot of rodeo in the state of California, they have regional airports that serve a multiplicity of areas and towns. Not every town is going to have an airport, and many of which drive 35, 40 miles to be served by said airport. So why should Burley be in competition with a regional airport against Twin Falls, which is literally 30 miles up the road? See, I would be in favor of merging those two airports. That would be my, what I would be in favor of. If they could merge those two airports, then the commerce would still be there available for all of these surrounding Magic Valley cities. But if you can't do anything with the current uh, Burley Airport, you can't expand it, you can't fix it, you can't solve the safety issues, then get rid of it. Okay, I got you down. We'll take another call. Thanks, Gene. Appreciate it. I got uh, a yes with a qualification there. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Go ahead, please. Uh, is it me? Yeah, I hope so, because I'm talking to you. Okay. I, I think Gina was right. I think the regional airport, or redoing the Twin Falls, bringing it more central to the cities in this area, would be smarter. And if they were as adamant in doing that, they'd get it done. My word, how long have we heard about getting an airport for Burley? Why don't they use that energy and, and try to get a regional airport? All right, Dwayne, you remember back in the 70s, I hope uh, you were here at that time. I was, and I know quite a bit about this because I'm very familiar with the location that they were thinking about building a regional airport out by a proximity near the interstate. Uh, those things went by the wayside because of our Arguing and uh, various uh, civic leaders not getting together and using common sense. Uh, so right now, I don't think that we're going to be seeing or entertaining thoughts of a quote-unquote regional airport enhanced out of the location where it is now at Twin Falls. Well, uh, 
and uh, the, the people that were doing that said are no longer around here. I know that. Well, now, wait a minute. That's not fair. Yes, some are. Well, the the main person isn't. Okay. okay. The, uh, but what, what I'm uh, saying is they need to put more energy in pushing it. They they pushed it so far, and then when a little bit of opposition came, they backed off. If they start building a regional airport out there where it's central, Twin Falls, I mean, they were the biggest opposition. Twin Falls is going to have to do something because that regional airport out there, they just, they just need to ignore some of those people who don't want to go in on it and start building it, and you're going to see those other cities start coming in. Uh, they're going to begin to realize, hey, our airport's not going to be worth nothing. Well, there is a refurbishment that is uh, on the planning stages for the Twin Falls Terminal, etc. But I'm going to put you down. Yes or no, Duane, quickly. No. Okay, gotcha. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate your call. Thank you much. Uh, Gina, yesterday, real quick, I'll just say this. Yesterday, uh, the last two hours of the program, I could hear really good, and, and this morning it seems like it's gone back the other way a little bit, and uh, very minimal. I'm having a little trouble. It's got to be the phone lines, because I'm not going to be screwing with the Gettner any more than what I already have. Uh, oh, well, um, I know it's not my phone line, because they've done everything, redone it twice in the last two weeks, and so... Uh, the feed line to me is just minimal, and uh, I know it's not my phone line because I only get what the station sends me. Uh, caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Zeb. Yes, quickly. I definitely think we need a new airport because airports don't belong in the middle of a city. And let's take, for instance, Twin Halls versus Burley, the number of crashes that we've had on takeoffs and everything in Burley far outweigh what Twin Falls has because they're out there for the very sparsely populated and the danger's not there. All right, wait a minute. I, I take I take exception to that comment, though, Keith. Uh, it wasn't the airport, it wasn't the runways that caused the problem in Burley. It was pilot air. In most cases, you're correct. I think in almost every case with the accidents there at Burley, I think I am correct. Uh, you know, whether it be pilot error or mechanical, it doesn't make any difference. The plane still goes down. Uh, it and makes so a difference, though, when there's, there's a... a field there, so the field there for the crash in, uh, the loss of life is a lot less. Well, you know, keep in mind, though, Keith, you were talking about the actual crashes as to whether or not it was caused by the airport, per se, or not. Well, it wasn't. It was caused by pilot error, and uh, there has to be a line of definement there. And uh, I'm going to have to have your answer. Are you in favor of keeping and maintaining a new airport in Burley or not? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Hey, thanks, my friend. I appreciate it. i got to get a weather forecast in here real quick. And the weather this hour is brought to you by Burley Glass, 1029 Overland Avenue in Burley. And, of course, they're always offering you the best in windows, windows that are energy efficient. And they can help uh, increase the efficiency two to three times in your home. Man, alive in the wintertime, that is great. You're going to save money thanks to Burley Glass, 1029 Overland Avenue in Burley. Gentle Ben, Leslie. The whole crew six seven eight one four five nine. Here are now, Michael Rogers weather. Hey everybody, Michael Rogers is at the ranch. There ain't really nothing to talk about. Still sunny and hot. Still going to stay that way all the way through the weekend. Ninety seven for the high today. In fact, ninety seven for the high today, and also for tomorrow. Wouldn't surprise me if you hit a hundred. But other than that, more of the same. Do not be surprised if a thunderstorm fires up out of nowhere because you still got some moisture hanging around the Magic Valley of South July. Though. But other than that. There you have it, more of the same. Enjoy the weather still, whether you got it. All right, Michael, thank you. Brought to you by Burley Glass, our dear friends, 1029 Overland Avenue in Burley, 678-1459. Don't forget, we'll take some more calls quickly on our little survey about the Burley Airport. Best tire value promise in the industry right there at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Free lifetime tire and mileage care, too. Free flat repairs, free tire rotation, free tire rebalancing, free air checks, free brake and alignment checks. 
checks. Oh, my goodness. Stop in and see all any of these seven locations today. Check out the front end alignments, the best in brake service, batteries. It's all there at your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tower Centers with Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family and Paul, John on Pauline and Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. Let's see if we have another call waiting. Gina, is there another call? No. Oh, my goodness, call me. Uh, do you, in the Burley area, do you want and or need an airport? There was a huge editorial this morning in the Times News that says taxpayers pay for playground at Burley Airport and basically said that it is not necessary to have an airport in Burley. I, again, I'm not taking a stand on this this morning. I want to hear your comments, so give me a call. The nose right Right now are outweighing the yeses, and we still have time for a couple of more calls. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Nobody calling. Ah, I thought I heard you're the cow. The well, I've, I've got cows out in the pasture, so I thought maybe one mood or something. Um, but I'd like to hear your comments on this quickly, so give us a jingle on the landline, 436-2244-1866-927-4587. By the way, there is a new website, and it's called tellepa.com, and it's been opened up to really lambast the EPA and tell them to get out of your life. Once again, tellepa.com. Okay? Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Hi. Um, my response would be, no, we do not need a brand new regional airport that uh, supplies um, for larger air airplanes. All right. Keep going. Oh, sorry. Um, we need um, we need to maintain the old airport. We do not wait, want to get rid of it because, in case of a major earthquake or a terrorist attack against uh, the major bridges that link us between our land and, and Twin Falls, we need that old airport not only to help train the smaller flyer plane people, you know, the pilots and everything. But we need to have some way to reach across to Twin Falls in case of any major uh, emergency. All right. Well, I appreciate it. Now, you're saying no. I, I can't let you go on. I can't let you carry on because I'm out of time. But I've got your vote down as a no. Thank you very much for your call this morning. I appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we're going to head to the news. And coming up at 9.06, we've got Doug Johnson from Colorado. He's going to be calling in. Real quick, caller. You've got 15 seconds. Fast. Go ahead. And <laughs> they hung up. All right. Well, listen, thank you for your calls. I appreciate it. We'll have more, much more on this on a later program next week, as a matter of fact, on the Burley Airport, as opposed to possibly just entertaining thoughts of going to Twin Falls. But I uh, appreciate your calls. We'll be back in six minutes. Don't go away. Uh, welcome back. Hour number two is up at the ranch on a Wednesday. And we're brought to you by our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you, along with some of our great advertisers like Lease Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland and Burley, and our friends at Western Race Services, always at your disposal. From the canyons of the Snake River and the Thank you very much, Western Waste Services. Get your portable storage units at Western Waste Services today. And by the way, like I mentioned the other day, they've got dumpsters in various sizes so that if you're cleaning out your basement or maybe doing a remodeling job, whatever, and you got a lot of bunch of trash and all this old stuff laying around, just throw it in the dumpster. My gully, they'll take care of it. Western Waste Services, call them at 734-6969. Always at your disposal.
Say, don't forget, on Thursdays tomorrow, we're going to have uh, Mickey's Country Garden sponsoring, of course, Gardening for Idiots, and named after me, because I'm not much of a gardener. But, oh, my goodness, have I learned from the lovely Miss Vicky at Vicky's Country Garden, 185 South, 600 West of Paul. Don't forget, for all your gardening needs, landscaping needs, everything right there at Vicky's Country Garden. Really nice people. And, of course, when you mention nice people, you have got to mention our dear friend Joel Heward and his staff over at Hanson Mortuary. You know, they, they have such flexible hours. They're not just 9 to 5. They are there when you need them. And believe me, always upholding the highest ethical standards with unquestioned integrity working for you and your family. Please contact them today. When there's a the passing of a loved one, believe me, they can help you dot all the I's, cross all the T's in a very stressful situation. Handsome Mortuary, 710 6th Street in Rupert. Number to call, 436-5636. Joel Heward at Hanson Mortuary. I always look forward to Thursdays. Well, pardon me, Wednesdays. I look forward to Thursdays, too. But uh, right now, I look forward to talking to a dear friend back in Colorado. And that, of course, is Doug Johnson. Doug, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Seb. I'm good. How are you? Um, very, very concerned about what's going on with so many stories coming out of the um, Washington, D.C. White House, uh, going around the country uh, with energy and everything else. I don't even know where to start. I, I will mention one story to you because I'd like your take on it. And that's, of course, the story of Idaho and Bo Bergdahl. And uh, this is going to turn into another scandal for the White House. And I'll tell you why. I honestly honestly believe that uh, the Obama White House is going to try to whitewash this entire situation. Are you up to speed on what's going on? Uh, last I heard, they're going to put him back on active duty. That's all I know. Uh, they have already put him back on active duty. But now here's the interesting thing, Doug. He is lawyered up, and this will shock you. His lawyer is a gentleman by the name of Eugene Fidel that is famous for supporting enemy combatants' rights at Guantanamo Bay. That ought to make you sit up and take notice. Um... It does. Um, it's odd to me if they were going to charge him with something that would involve risk of his future freedom that they would put him back on active duty. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how to react to it. Well, I, I didn't mean to throw that one at you as a curveball from left field, but uh, I will tell you also that when I listen, here's another story, I know you're aware of what's going on, and that was <laughs> the story yesterday of uh, Senator Harry Reid standing up at the podium, looking at the TV cameras, and absolutely in his emphatic little weak milk toast voice saying, our border is secure. Ay, yeah, yeah, Doug, I know you've got an opinion on that one. Well, I do. When Harry Reid speaks, it's no different than Barack Obama, Nancy Pelosi, John Boehner in many cases, uh, and, um, and, and many of the establishment Republicans, when, they're, when their lips move, they're, they're lying. I mean, it's that simple. <laughs> and Harry Reid, um, I, I actually said to my wife the other day, I said, people like him... Uh, getting as old as they are, I have to wonder why they never think about their accountability before God that they're facing in the relative near future just based on their age. Uh, but obviously they don't. They keep on lying and keep on deceiving, and it, it just astounds me. Did you happen to hear about the newspaper articles and ads that are being run in certain California newspapers, Doug, that uh, are asking for people to call and contact a certain number if they would like to be Become households taking in illegal alien children. For every child, they will be paid over six thousand dollars a month, tax-free money, and the kids get government health care for free. Yeah, this really doesn't surprise me. Um, our government wastes money hand over fist. They have no care or concern about how much they spend. Actually, they want to spend a lot because this entire illegal immigration thing is, is all part of the plan to collapse our system. But um, kind of as a dovetail to that on the same issue to respond to your questions, Zeb, um, I do a regular show in Houston, uh, Texas, um, uh, every week, and I was on there early this morning, 
And the host was telling a story about last night he was at a baseball game for his son. And he's well known. He's got the biggest talk show in uh, in Houston, and and so people often approach him when he uh, is you know in public places. And he said a liberal came up to him and asked him about the border situation, what he thought should be done. And the host said, well, he said, I think we should send these people back, shut the border, send them back. And the guy just exploded at him and said, so you want all these kids to die? They're going to go back to their countries and be killed. And this is how the left does it. They play on people's emotions like this is what we need to do and we need to pay people to keep them here. When the fact is the most compassionate thing we can do is shut that border down tight. Those kids, their parents, are sending them on a terrible journey to get to America. One third of the girls making those, those trips are being sexually assaulted. Children are being abused and attacked. The safest thing for those children is to stay home and not make that trip, and you need to take away the incentive to do that. And so really the compassionate thing is not to pay people to keep them in their homes, not to move them around the country or whatever. It's to turn them around and ship them back. Now, certainly if they have an immediate medical need or you know, they have some need for some food and whatever, we have to give them that. But it should literally be a U-turn. They come across that border, we turn them around, and we send them back. There should not be these court hearings or whatever. But it was said this week, and you probably saw this one, Zeb, that 90% of these children, it's expected, will be given amnesty under the guise of um, uh, that they are uh, fleeing oppression and, and uh, difficult circumstances. So we can expect, of the hundreds of thousands expected to cross into this country this year, 90% of them will be kept here. You know, right there is the crux of the problem, 90% of 50, 60, 70. Uh, Brett Hume and others have said that we're, before this problem is possibly stopped or stymied, we're going to be looking at 100,000 coming into this country. And here, here's the thing. If they're running ads, Doug, and they're inquiring about people possibly becoming uh, households to house these children, and we were told that these children are up here and being freighted and moved to other parts of the country where they have quote-unquote relatives, that's another lie. Because if they're asking for asylum and they're asking for places to live, uh, we're being duped into thinking that they have family here. I honestly believe that these children are nothing more than pawns to create an aura of, okay, the kids are here, mom and dad will bring you in next, and inflate the democratic base. I honestly think that's it, cold and simple. Well, I think you're absolutely right, and I have a couple of comments on what you said, Zeb. Um, one is, um, it's interesting, the numbers you quoted are far below what I'm hearing. Yeah. I'm hearing yeah. since the first of the year there, there have been um, anywhere from 150 to 200,000, and by the end of this year, they're expecting a total of 350,000. Uh, the other thing I have heard uh, is that there, there are plans, once they establish them in different places around the country, because by moving them around the country, they keep them further from the border, and it's easier to keep them here. But then the, the unspoken plan at this point will be to say, well, the compassionate thing to do is to reunite them with their families. Having given the children amnesty, um, bring their parents here, and now we, that's bringing the voters in, and they'll, of course, get amnesty, too, so they can be with their children, and we will have millions of people. Uh, the Democrats' goal, we know, is to bring in 10 to 12 million illegal foreigners to, to try and enroll most of them as Democrat voters. If they can do that, they will control our government for the foreseeable future. And I don't mean just one or two elections. I mean for the rest of yours and my lifetime and many people younger than us. Uh, this is a major, major thing. And the other thing we have to remember is a lot of these are coming in through Texas. And the number one goal of the Democrats right now is to convert Texas to a blue state. If they succeed, if Texas falls more than any other state, this is critical, if Texas falls, the entire system is is over because the, the country will then be controlled by Democrats. There's no way to turn that around. So we this is a huge, huge issue, and Americans seem to be aware of it. The good news is there are many communities, and major media is not reporting it, but there are many, many communities standing up and fighting back and refusing to accept this. And we need to see a lot of that. And I'm glad to hear that some communities are, but but uh, it's it's a big long-term battle, and the government's being key trying to slip them into states without without even telling the governors about it. 
I couldn't agree more. Doug, stand by. I've got about a 30-second break. I'll be right back with you. Don't forget, folks, every morning we start the program with the weather, and it's brought to you by Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Well, look for their blue door. All countertops, and they've got the Oakley Stone, the Natural Stone, all the carpet cabinets, everything you need for the beautification of your home. And they've got a guarantee they can meet or beat any price on flooring and free in-house consultation. Kyle and Whitney Cheney are the people that you want to talk to at 678-6945. Cheney Flooring and Home Design, 1228 Oakley Avenue in Burley. Look for their blue door. Doug, I sometimes wonder how much more we can take, how much more the American public is going to be uh, led down a path of uh, scandal by this administration. There's so many scandals that have taken away from Benghazi, taken away from the IRS, uh, which you wrote in your blog this week was excellent. I want to compliment you on that. And now the DOJ, you probably heard about this story, uh, the DOJ is going to investigate a parade float from the 4th of July in a little town in Nebraska because it offended the Obama administration. They had a mannequin with an Obama mask on it standing out in front of an outhouse that says Obama Presidential Library. It won honorable mention from the three judges. 95% of the people that were there thought it was the best float in the whole parade. And one person got upset and filed a grievance. And now the Department of Justice is going to investigate Gate. Doug, this is insane. I'm really glad you brought this up, Zeb, because I was hoping we would talk about this and, and, and a, a little tangent, but I think fits in with it very well. Um, first, that 95% of the people who voted for this float better look out because they're probably now on a government watch list. Um, you know, our, our government sees patriots as terrorists, and uh, Eric Holder, as I'm sure you're aware, has recently stated that he is kept awake at night at the thought of our soldiers returning home because they may become domestic terrorists. No, oh, brother. And that the, uh, the the people who stand against he and President Obama, uh, that there is a racial animus, animus that many of them have against them. Uh, once again, they're playing the race card, and they, they see everything as against them. You cannot object uh, to them without being either a racist or a terrorist or both. And that, that's how they see things. They, they see our returning military. They see people who, who fly a Gibson flag. For, and those who aren't familiar with the term, the Gibson flag was a, the revolutionary yellow flag with the snake coiled up that said, don't tread on me. Uh, pe people who, uh, who do things like that are seen as potential terrorists. People who plan for the future, who store food in case of emergency. We live in climates where we could just have a blizzard that would keep us snowed in for a few days. And if you stock up food for that and water for that in your home, you're seen as a potential terrorist. This is what we're up against. And so when we see this nonsense happen, just like, and I know you remember this one, last year when the rodeo clown uh, yes. you know, got all this uh, static for uh, wearing an Obama mask, it's the same thing. You're not allowed to criticize this government. This is absolutely what totalitarian regimes do. You do not question. You do not criticize you're not allowed to and, it, and if you do it enough or in a way they don't like it they will send you off for reprogramming and we're already seeing them do it they did it to the baker here in colorado they're forcing him to, to reprogramming classes to teach him not to think negatively about gays because he refused to make a wedding cake for a gay couple this is the kind of stuff we're seeing in our country we are not the free america we were just a few decades ago it's a very scary thing no i totally agree with you we are on the same page from top to bottom uh what What's happening here is just absolutely so stupid, and that's the only word I can use, that we would be wasting taxpayer funding on the Department of Justice to look into a float on a 4th of July parade in a town in Nebraska because they used a uh, mannequin and a mask of Obama standing out in front of a very joking, very funny Obama presidential library. Doug, this is nothing new. They have ridiculed and they have had other floats about about Richard Nixon, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, George Bush, Ronald Reagan. This is not the first time, but this president, this administration, thinks they're above the fray and above criticism. Well, they do, but it's, it's more than that. They honestly, I think, believe 
Eric Holder and Barack Obama believe that uh, Americans are against them. And, and, and if Americans really knew what they were up to, they would be, actually. Uh, Americans aren't educated enough to be against them. If they were, uh, they, they would be in serious trouble because Americans would be rallying and going to Washington and physically removing them if they had to from office. But um, the fact is that they see anybody who's not a left-wing progressive which means you most likely have to live in one of the major cities in the country and you know be hardcore left. If you're not one of them, then you are a threat to them. And, uh, what else was said? They can't take criticism because they see it as a threat. And nothing bothers them more than the thought of them losing power. So they, they have to see it as a threat and do something about it. And that's where these investigations come in. And it is, it's nonsense, it's ridiculous. And yet the worst part is, um, like you say, it's a, it's a waste of taxpayer dollars. But more than that, it's a threat to Americans' freedom. It is a threat to our freedom, and it's almost, I'm not going to hesitate, I'll just say what's on my mind. I'm going to exercise my free speech rights. It's almost like they are a dictatorial society. And if you say anything that goes against the grain or rubs against the, the, the hairline to the point where they're offended, they're going to come after you, and like you said very succinctly a few moments ago, they are going to go after you until they're going to put you in a reprogram programming mode to change your personality. That's not the free America I remember growing up, Doug. No, you're absolutely right. In fact, yesterday I wrote a blog post at hostsenseblog.com. It's a story that came up about um, and, uh, the um, House of Representatives actually uh, pulling in some funding of the IRS uh, to try and keep their enforcement division more under control. And in my article I wrote and talked about the fact that there will be there will be pushback. They, they will not quietly say, okay, we'll do less. They will take what resources they have, and they will use that to go even more against conservative Americans. And I, I went into a lengthy thing about that. The, the, the point being that we are not dealing with just another bunch of uh, people we disagree with in office, like the old days when Democrats and Republicans disagreed, but when the day was over, they still go have dinner together. That's not what it is anymore. And uh, they, we have to remember, Barack Obama referred to people on the right, specifically Republicans, because they see anybody on the right as a Republican, but he referred to them openly as enemies. And that's an extremely strong word to use against American citizens who may just have a political disagreement with you. But that's how they see them. And so because we are seen as enemies, we are seen as a threat. And I will tell you, when I wrote that piece yesterday, I sat, as I finished the piece, and I proofread it and, and realized this one is a typo and I need to go back and fix. I only seem to miss some of those. But just as I was about to publish that, as I was about to click on that button to publish that article, I thought to myself, this puts me even more as a target. I mean, I'm already a target. It puts me even more as a target because this is something they don't want people to hear. And this is what we say. Is every, every morning when you turn on your microphone and go on the air, you're opening yourself to even more targeting. And that's what happens. And the day is coming. And I unfortunately believe it's a not too distant, distant future unless we, we take a major stand very quickly. The day is coming where they will be shutting down programs like yours and things that I write because it's not acceptable in America anymore. I agree with you, and I just hope and pray that the general public wakes up to these issues uh, because uh, I haven't got a lot of time left. I've, I've only got about two minutes left, but I want you to respond to this. I see this um, administration utilizing, and I'll be careful in the word utilizing, the word racism and the application of racism more so than any other administration ever in the history of the United States because racism is to their advantage right now uh, and possibly they're looking at the racism charges to elevate them in the polls. I think honestly this is what this administration is after right now. Denigration and the thoughts of racism to push them further up the polls. Oh, absolutely. Um, racism and hatred. Uh, so, for example, if they can't find something you said or done to tie it in some indirect way to racism in their minds, they will then call it hatred. Uh, and uh, so that, that's what they do. In fact, that is the entire reason, I believe, why the progressive movement forced Hillary Clinton out of the race in 2008 and made her, in a secret meeting behind the scenes overnight, change from fighting Obama to endorsing and embracing his candidacy because they realized 
plain race card gave them an edge that the Republicans could not easily fight. And they have played it to the hilt, and they are continuing to. And the best thing Americans can do is ignore it and say it's nonsense. We are Americans. The color of our skin doesn't, ma doesn't matter in, in determining whether or not you're an American. You're American because you're an American, not because of the color of your skin. And uh, we need to reject their false charges. And um, unfortunately, the public is falling for it. And that's because the mainstream media backs them on it. I wish we had longer. I honestly enjoy the conversations. I apologize. I didn't even get into the Horse Sense blog about the IRS. Uh, you've got to rein me in next week, and we'll talk about that. But, Doug, I do appreciate all your opinions on the subject matter that we discussed this morning. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. Well, thanks, Zeb. I always enjoy it, and I'll look forward to next week. By the way, uh, is it hot back there in Colorado like it is here? We're going to hit triple digits again today. Um, we were very hot. Now, the elevation I'm at, and I'm at 7,400 feet, so we run a little cooler. But for us, if we get into the 90s, it's extremely hot. We were running well into the 90s uh, consistently, and then a few days ago we have had um, some moisture come in, and so we've had some rain, so that's breaking our temperatures for a couple of days. We're due for two, still today and tomorrow. We're still going to have mild temperatures. Then we're back up again after that. Okay. The, uh, future, so. Uh, we're feeling the baking feeling, I guess you'd call it, uh, like we're in an oven out here uh, most of the time. Doug Johnson, dear, dear friend in Colorado. God bless you, man. Thanks for all your input, and I'll be in touch. The best to you and your wife. Thanks, Thank Doug. you so much. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I love having him on the air from Colorado. Doug Johnson, thank you. Hey, Oakley Pioneer Days is off and running. They've had two big nights of the bump and rub car race. Now tonight, they've got that huge Jim Canna. And that Jim Canna every year, oh my goodness, they go till like 2 or 3 in the morning. Huge amount of entries. And then tomorrow, uh, Friday night and Saturday night, the great big IMPRA rodeo, fireworks and dancing. And, and then on Saturday, don't forget, yet they've got the great big pioneer day parade they've got everything for anybody in the family yep it's just a great big celebration oakley pioneer days a flood of blessings all the way through saturday in oakley idaho you get on up there and some of the merchants also want to wish you to come on up to Oakley, and they include Smith's Cafe, 135 East Main in Oakley. They're open Monday through Saturday, 6.30 till 1 p.m., Sundays until 11. They make their own patty, patties, yeah, like Hannity's. They make their own patties for the one-third pound burger, and they've got onion rings up there to die for. They are good, I know, firsthand. Absolutely. And don't forget, on Saturday, July 29th, they're going to be having a Dutch oven dinner from 5 to 9 right there at the cafe. It's it's going to be good. You're going to love it at Smith's Cafe in Oakley. And thanks also to Oakley Valley Stone, 204 West Main Street in Oakley. They wish the people of Oakley a very happy 127-year anniversary. And if you're looking for stone for a new fireplace, a headstone for a loved one, landscaping boulders, whatever, look no further than Oakley Valley Stone, 204 West Main Street in Oakley. Really, really good folks. Um, we're going to be going to the phone line in just a very few minutes, and we've got a guest with the Institute of Energy Research on the line with us, but stand by for that. I also want to remind you, too, about our friends at Let's Ride. Mm -mm, Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley, their summer hours, open Monday through Saturday from 9 to 6. Now, they've got many of the 2015 models coming in, dirt bikes, can ams side-by-sides, and they've got rebates on a lot of the 2014 models. And believe me, you know, if you need a generator, this is the place to go to get a generator. Their generators are on sale right now for your camping needs and uh, also maybe in case something happens, keep your house cool. So check it out on Highway 24 between Rupert and Burley. It's Let's Ride. Open Monday through Saturday from 9 to 6 where the fun is sold. Uh, real quick, too, want to remind you about our friends at Lee's Furniture Floors and More. You heard them last week. They're having a great big sidewalk sale. And Lee's Furniture Floors and More, they've got all kinds of living room sets, many, many options for those living room sets. And they got flooring on special. They've got great low prices on carpet. And they've got many, many of the mattresses on special price. You can't afford to pass this up. No, get in there today at 450. 
59 Overland in Burley. That is the home of Lee's Furniture Floors and more. They are absolutely the sharpest people around. They know everything that looks good. They can help you with your interior decorating. Don't forget Lee's Furniture Floors and more in Burley serving you. Let's say good morning to Chris Warren with the Institute of Energy Research. Chris, good morning. How are you? Is he there? Maybe not. But uh, we've got him back now. Okay, good. Uh, Chris Warren, IER's Communication Director. Good morning, Chris. How are you? Good morning, Zeb. Sorry for that mix up there. No, 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 not a problem. Uh, I appreciate your taking the time to come on our program this morning uh, with the Institute well, of Energy well, Research. You're very welcome. Uh, I have a question, Chris. I, I heard a report yesterday that said that the United States is now producing more oil than any other country. And if that's the case, why then are we Americans, when we go to the pump, with the vast amount of energy that we have, why are we still paying right at the $4 mark across the board? You're right about that. We are producing the most oil in the world now, and uh, a lot of that is thanks to the production on state and private land. The reason that, that Americans are still paying a lot at the pump is because we, we, we haven't reached our full potential, potential of energy production. Uh, if this president were to, to open up federal land, to say, or approve the Keystone XL pipeline, uh, people are always coming into the market, and that would push gas prices even lower. Okay, now let's talk about Keystone for just a minute, Chris, because the more I read about Keystone, the more I read about Obama and uh, his energy so-called platform, I don't think we're ever going to make an agreement with Canada to have Keystone finished. I think all the time and effort and the jobs and everything else has been a total waste and a boondoggle. What are your thoughts? Uh, I, I agree with you on that, Zeb. It, it seems like the president has something out for the Keystone Pipeline, and I don't really see him approving it anytime soon. And it's a shame, because we've already seen uh, a huge uptick in jobs uh, and, and oil moving throughout the country from the southern leg of the pipeline. Uh, that would be greatly increased by approving the, the XL portion of it. But for some reason, this president is adamantly opposed to it. I don't know what it is, possibly because he is... Uh, people like Tom Tyre and the environmentalists um, out in California whispering his ear not to approve it. Uh, but it's really a shame for the rest of the country. Okay, but why? Uh, what, if this pipeline, it's not the first, it's not an innovative idea, it's one of literally thousands of pipeline networks around the center portion of the United States. Why? And it's been proven to be possibly the best of all of them and more environmentally friendly than anything we've ever had in the past. I don't understand the negative on this. There are thousands of miles of pipelines going through the United States. Uh, and th this is just one more, and this one would transport a lot of really good oil down to the Gulf Coast. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense that he's opposed to it. I, I think what, what's happened here is that it's become a rallying call for the environmental left. Uh, and, and we know that this president bends to that, to that uh, faction of his party. Uh, and that's what you're seeing with Keystone. It, it's, a, it's a rudimentary thing at this point in our country. Uh, pipelines transport oil, transport oil and natural gas um, all around. Uh, but you're still seeing this president listen to those left-wing environmentalists. Uh, instead of the calls of the American people. Now, when you say the left-wing environmentalists and the hypocrisy of Tom Stiers, he made most of his buku money from energy, and that was fossil fuel energy, not wind or solar, which is a joke. Um, what's it going to take? How can the American public, we say to always talk to our senators and congressmen, not doing any good? What about the power to the people? How can our voices be heard, and how can we demand that this idiocy from this president stop? I, I think one crucial part of this, and obviously, like you said, contacting representatives, being informed about these issues is, is probably the most important. But exposing people like Tom Steyer, uh, like this administration, uh, for being the hypocrites that they are. Uh, Tom Steyer is jet-setting around the world uh, using fossil fuels. He's not doing it using solar and wind. Uh, and like you said, he made all of his money uh, investing in coal. Um, so I think exposing these people for who they really are, for showing that, 
um, that, that for them it's just about power and control, and, and it's not about helping the American people. When you look, Chris, at the energy grids across this country, of which are almost all of them controlled by coal companies and coal-fired generating plants, what are we going to do? I mean, uh, when they eventually want to push the shove and out the back door with coal and uh, the energy they produce, where are the where is the energy for the grids going to come from? Well, right now we're turning to natural gas. We've seen that in the Northeast this past uh, this past winter, uh, when there was coal shutting down, when, and when there is nuclear shutting down as well. The problem with that is when you don't have a diverse uh, mix of fuel sources, of reliable ones, I should add, uh, not wind and solar, uh, then the prices are gonna are gonna skyrocket. Natural gas is a great fuel. Uh, it, it's used for multiple things. Though. It's used to heat homes and also for electricity. And now we're talking about exporting it. Well, that, that's all fine and, and, and dandy, but you, you have to have multiple sources of, of electricity. And coal's primary use is for electricity. And pushing that out of the out of the market is going to not only increase the price of natural gas, but it's going to increase uh, your electricity bill. I don't know how much more America can take. I know uh, the senior citizens that are on fixed incomes. I know people that are on strict budgets right now. They're having to make decisions as to whether or not to let Johnny and Susie play Little League Baseball or go anywhere during the summer. I just honestly don't know how much more the American public can take. And I don't blame them for becoming very vocal and very hateful towards this administration. Yeah, I think that's key to become vocal against the administration. I know we've been doing it for the, you know, for the length of his um, of his tenure as president. But you're you're right about these issues and who they really hurt. And they 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 hurt the elderly. They hurt people on fixed incomes the most because that, those are the people spending most of their money on energy costs. And people are having to make decisions and cutbacks where otherwise they would not have uh, in the past. And and it's really a shame. Um, uh, that this that this administration is not looking out for for the American people. Instead, they're looking out for for special interests. You know, uh, we've got a caller with a question, but I want you to make a comment on this. It's still, and I heard a loopy economist the other night make a stupid statement, and I had to laugh at it. This economy, uh, economist was asked if she thought that higher energy prices would lead to inflation, and she goes, "Well, that's a possibility." Don't don't these people understand that every single thing in this country is tied to energy and the increase in energy increases inflation? I don't understand why they have to even think about it. Yeah, it, 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 it's pretty mesmerizing. Uh, it, people don't seem to understand that. Like you said, everything that we use, everything we do in our everyday lives is tied to energy in some in some way or another. I mean, look at the products we use. Everything we, we use that's plastic, for example, uh, is tied to energy. Uh, everything that's manufactured in this country is tied to energy. Uh, it's not just what the, the gas that you're putting in your tank or, or your electricity uh, that you're turning your lights on with. It's, it's, it's everything. All right. We have a caller with a question. Go ahead, please, caller. You're on the air. Yeah. Our president wants to uh, curtail the use of coal, and yet He's loading ships as fast as he can load them to send all the coal he can to China. Uh, can you respond? And I'll take your answer off the air, please. Uh, I think that's an excellent question. The hypocrisy of the Obama administration uh, wanting to sell and help our enemies, and let's face it, China is our enemy, even though we owe the company store because we're borrowing money from them. Uh, respond on that issue of Obama selling all the coal to China. Sure, you're you're definitely seeing that. Um, you're seeing coal exports go up, which, which in all in all is not a bad thing. But w when it's artificially done uh, by shutting down coal use here, the, the the coal producers have nowhere else to go with it. Um, so I think that's why why you're really seeing that. Um, and, and we really need to turn this around, and so we can start burning or keep burning, I should say, our, our coal here at home. Um, and that's what I would say to that. 
Uh, do you look for any bright spots on the horizon, Chris? I mean, uh, when you pull up to the gas station like out here, diesel is uh, at an average of around $4 right now, and I'm filling up my truck at least twice a week, and uh, I'm looking at twelve to $1,500 a month on fuel costs. I can't afford and maintain my business at these increased fuel costs. Yeah, I think there is uh, there are a few bright spots on the horizon, and, and they're the same bright spots that we've seen um, since the the fracking and oil and gas boom um, back in when it started back in '05, and that's that's what's going on in state and private lands. Now it's a slow it's a slower progression because because we aren't tapping into the oil and gas that we have on federal lands, but I would say that's a bright spot. And and after that, I mean, if 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 some sensible Republicans can take over take over the Senate and, and looking forward towards 2016, if we get someone in office who, who would really embrace uh, America's energy supply, uh, then, then that would be a bright spot. But as long as we're with this administration and this mindset that we have to, to wean ourselves off of our most reliable and abundant fuel sources, there are very few bright spots. But I still question how in the world the Democrats could even be treading water right now and even the American public thinking, thinking about putting another Democrat in the Oval Office, whether it's Hillary or if it's someone else. How in the world can the American public accept these policies which are just literally holding them at bay, almost robbing the money right out of their pockets? I think that I think there is a, a shift going uh, going on right now. I think what really needs to happen, though, is someone needs to step forth uh, with r really strong, solid policy ideas to counter what's going on, uh, whether it's Hillary in 2016 or whoever the Democratic nominee is going to be, uh, to counter those points and not just um, and really have have logical, sound solutions to, to meet all of our needs in this country, uh, specifically from our point of view, energy. Now, what do you folks do at the Institute of Energy Research? I mean, uh, do you send out directives? Do you send out uh, notifications to the government that you're not happy and that people have contacted you and you want certain policies changed? What basically is your mission there? Yes, we, we do all of those things. So our, our basic mission is to, to educate and inform people about uh, energy policies that are going on uh, at the federal level and also at the state level. Uh, so we do that by taking, looking at regulations, say, that the EPA puts out or looking at production that's happening on, on federal versus private lands uh, and, and really making that information digestible for for people across the country. Uh, along with that, we, our message, uh, we send our message up to, to Capitol Hill, uh, to, to the White House, saying, we're, you know, we're not happy with these regulations. The American people aren't happy with these regulations, and it's time for them to be stopped. So that, that's our main, that's our mission, that's our main message that we're trying to, to get across here in D.C. All right, thank you. We have caller with a question. Go ahead, caller, please. You're on the air. Yes, the last time I checked, we imported upwards of a trillion dollars of oil every year, up to seven, eight hundred billion, I mean, yeah, billion. And, uh, and it was absolutely no need for it. I mean, and think about how that could affect our economy, lower the price of fuel, and, 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 and boost. I mean, if you were to take and lower the price of fuel, a dollar a gallon, well, or even a dollar fifty, the 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 uh, dump and the uh, boost of the economy would be like nothing else, and, and and you know as well as I do that this administration has no intent of trying to help the economy. Not really, even though they say it, the, the, their actions never match their words. But uh, and then there's what Republican, what leader is going to stand up for some solid? In, you know, plans that are going to do it. Maybe a Republican, whether or not it's somebody that's going to run for president or elsewhere, that is going to do something for the people. We're scared to death and, and we're mad. And I'll hang up. I appreciate your call, caller, and your frustration is appreciated also. Uh, go ahead, Chris, respond to that. Sure. Well, um, I think the, the main issue to address is first question uh, about imports. You know, you've seen the U.S.'s imports drop significantly uh, over the past seven years or so. 
Uh, and that's largely, like I said, because of, of the increase in production here. Um, now, you're not going to avoid the fact that oil uh, and gasoline, too, are, are globally traded commodities. So the, the way of getting around that and, and to really lower energy costs is just to keep adding more and more and more into the supply. Uh, and that's what we can do by opening up more lands for production. As far as a Republican out there or any, any um, politician who has a solid energy plan, there are some, there are some here in the House uh, working on energy and commerce, Fred Upton for one, um, it, who have solid ideas and solid plans. It's just everything seems to be gridlocked here in D.C. Um, as, a, as a Republican candidate for the, as far as a Republican candidate for 2016, there is yet to be one that's emerged as a leading leader in energy policy, um, and that's that's one that we're going to be on on the lookout for. You know, you really bring up an excellent point here this morning that I think needs to be elaborated on. Here you have certain individuals. I don't care if it's a senator from Oklahoma, a senator from New Hampshire, or a uh, congressman from California. It seems like if they can't form a coalition of power, they stand there and they can rail all they want to about what's good, bad, or ugly, but they're not getting anything done. And you mentioned the gridlock. I can't understand why there aren't a coalition of senators, a coalition of congressmen that are beating their shoes on the table saying, Obama, get an energy policy. Nobody's doing that. Why? Well, I, I think you see a lot of this gridlock and and a lot of people trying to, uh, uh, you know, doing things in, in their own interest because of, for political expediency. Um, I, I don't think that you're going to see a lot of movement on this because everyone's um, kind of in their own world. So I, I think that, that really gets to the point of that. All right, well, I'll tell you what, Chris, I appreciate it. Uh, Institute of Energy Research Communications Director. And by the way, I should point out that Chris kind of jumped in the puddle of water here without having too much uh, advance notice. Thank you, Chris, so much. And uh, our very best to you and your office staff back there for what you do. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks for having me. You betcha. Uh, we better have a weather update. I uh, apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I, I'm having a hard time, a very difficult time, trying to hear anything on the air this morning. Uh, everything we're being sent down the line is cracking up. And uh, I'm having um, DNs listened on the other headsets. And what's going on in the air sounds fine. It's just the feed, and I'm having a hard time trying to hear. So we'll do the best we can. Um, let's have the weather brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, 1940 Bridgeview Boulevard in Twin Falls. Reese Widmeyer, the manager and a very good friend of ours. And the great indoors for those who love the great outdoors. I mean, they've got more than just the store. They are your outdoor adventure partner on everything you need for hunting, fishing, archery, camping, boating. Anything and everything is right there at Sportsman's Warehouse. You stop in and see them today. Quality gear gives you the edge you need to perform well and enjoy the journey at Sportsman's Warehouse. Here right now is Michael Rogers' weather. Hey everybody, Michael Rogers is at the ranch. Well, there's not really nothing to talk about. Still sunny and hot. Still going to stay that way all the way through the weekend. 97 for the high today. In fact, 97 for the high today and also for tomorrow. Wouldn't surprise me if you hit 100. But other than that, more of the same. Do not be surprised if a thunderstorm fires up out of nowhere because you still got some moisture hanging around the Magic Valley of South Carolina. But other than that, there you have it. More of the same. Enjoy the weather still. What do you got? All right. Thank you so much, Michael Rogers. Weather.com brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse 1940. Bridgeview Boulevard and Reese Woodmire. There is a sharp cookie. Reese Woodmire and uh, he's the manager right there at Sportsman's Warehouse. Caller, good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Deb. Yes, sir. Well, you know, the whole thing, you look at the immigration thing, you look at the energy thing, uh, it's so obvious that the bottom line with Obama and those that even in the Republican establishment, they want to destroy the economy of this country. And, and, and by bringing in these illegal aliens from um, allowing them in here to bring their diseases and everything, you see, they're bringing us down to third world status, and that's the goal of the elitist, the Bilderbergers, CFR people for years. And you can see that plan in action. And so if you don't look at the big picture, None of the pieces really make sense, but when you look at the, what they're really pushing for, and I mean, 
We've got people in both parties that are pushing this plan, and that's why there's such gridlock in the Republican Party, because the Republican establishment at the top basically is supporting that new world order, one world government stuff as well. Yeah, but Adrian, 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 wait a minute. I, I, you know, we can sit here and we can blame so-and-so, and we can blame this group, or we can blame Harry Reid, we can blame Obama. You know what? I think you're going to agree with me. I'm sick and tired of the blame game. I want somebody to represent me by going back there and saying, okay, my constituents want this. Who is going to join me in a full court press in changing this and forcing the Obama administration to adhere to what the people want. In other words, what I'm saying is one man standing up and yelling fire or chocolate isn't going to get anything done. But we need a coalition of power, and I'm sick and tired of these senators and congressmen going back there trying to act like the Pope. I want somebody that's going to be a junkyard dog and get something done for all of us. Well, I totally agree. Uh, yesterday alone, I sent out three separate emails on three different topics to our congressmen. You know, and, and if more people would do that, maybe they would get up and be a junkyard dog. Because, uh, but unless they they hear from us out here, um, you know, you know, if the, if the squeaky wheel gets greased, and if po folks understand the big picture and that we're where we're going. But they got to get informed, and that's why you say a lot of people. I talked to a good friend at church on Sunday, and uh, real conservative. He says, "I'm just turned off. I don't don't listen to any news anymore." And see, that's the problem. Yep. They have made it so negative that people are turned off. So we've got to we've got to get these people back involved. And I and over the years that I've been here, you know, a lot of people have dropped out for the race. I just talked to a friend yesterday. And, you know, and and this friend and I have been involved in this thing along with yourself for a good number of years. But I guarantee you, we need a lot more pullers at the yard, more people, you know, asking for the squeaky wheel to get greased, and that means save this republic. Well, I'll tell you one thing I want you to respond to, and give me a short answer on this, because i got a commercial break, Adrian. This uh, deal in Norfolk, Nebraska, regarding a 4th of July parade that was, they say, mocking Obama, and now the Department of Justice is going to interfere and do an investigation? Adrian, this is lunacy. Well, you know, we no longer have the First Amendment. You know, your ability to free free speech is and that's uh, that's free speech. I mean, we've all seen floats. My goodness, I I don't know if you've seen how Europeans mock Obama and uh, Clinton and uh, Hillary and so forth. I mean, their parades in Germany are just filled with mockery of our inept uh, absentee president and everything else that's going on. I agree. And uh, and over here, you know, it, it, our Justice Department's investigating this kind of stuff. I mean, this shows you that we don't have a free country anymore. I agree. Adrian, I agree with you. Thank you so much for your call. I do thank you. God bless. Thank have a good day. Thank you. God bless. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget, uh, man, they started actually last weekend with a great big heavy uh, muscle tank truck and tractor pull up at the Lincoln County Fair and Rodeo for this year. Well, now this Saturday night, they're going to have a ranch rodeo at 7 p.m. and show shown at the Lincoln County Fairgrounds. And that is going to be a ripping fun thing to do. Team branding, team doctoring, working ranch horse, trailer loading, snubbed up bronc riding. And then next week, of course, the great big fair and rodeo starts full swing. Yep, 4-H and FFA horse shows and barrel racing and horse pulling, junior rodeos, IMPRA rodeo, antique tractor pulling, Wow, they're going to have it all up there at the Lincoln County Fair and Rodeo for 2014 in Shoshone. Treat yourself and your family to some great Western rural fun. And that is by attending the Lincoln County Fair and Rodeo for 2014. Absolutely a fun time. 
Hey, by the way, all of us need to check on insurance. All of us need to make sure that we have our life insurance in order. All of us need to check on our health insurance. All of us, if we uh, are planning on retirement, we better make sure that we've got retirement planning and employee benefits, etc. if you own a business. Well, I know the professionals that can help you, and that's, of course, Cameron and Siemens Insurance, Highway 24 in Rupert. Number to call, 436-4424. That number again, 436-4424. The professionals that really, really know. Cameron and Siemens Insurance, 436-4424. You give Dean and Todd a call today. And they will take care of serving you. By the way, real quick, I also want to remind you about the Chadwick Sports Grill. Oh, my, today, Wednesday, what have they got? Aha! Chicken and bacon shish kebabs. Shish kebabs, I love saying that. With choice of potato and super salad for just nine ninety five. All of this and more. Menu is fantastic. People are really fun to be around. Great environment at 139 West Main in Burley. It is, of course, the Chadwick with chicken and bacon shish kebabs. Bob's today, you stop in to the Chadwick Sports Grill and enjoy. You know, I'm getting a little nervous because I don't see Kelton Hatch with the Idaho Fishing Game, and I've got it on the program sheet here that uh, he had called and said, yep, we're going to be there on the 16th, and today is the 16th, and uh Kelton, where are you? Supposedly, the Idaho fishing game is going to be next for the hour. Stay tuned. I'll be back in six. Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. Here we go. Hour number three is up at the ranch with our major sponsor, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers. All seven locations serving you, along with uh, some of our great advertisers, including Lease Furniture Floors and More at 459 Overland and Burley, and our friends at Western Way Services, always at your disposal. Get on the route service today. Get rid of your garbage. Call Kelly, 734-6969. My goodness sakes, he walked in the door as nonchalant as if he wasn't putting any pressure on my mind whatsoever for not being here on time. Good morning, Kelton Hatch. How are you? Did I miss the beginning of the show? That's not the point. Oh. Part of our contract with the Fish and Game says, thou shalt not create stress to the talk show host. You know, every once in a while I have to make sure you really like me. <laughs> you, you need well, me. You, uh, you circumvented that thought. <laughs> so, no, I was... I, I, I ran into a buddy just on the edge of town, stopped, uh-huh. was visiting, yeah. come to find out my clock is different than the actual Your time. Your clock has been different for a long time. <laughs> but I got here before it, before it started. I yes, did not did. break any rules to I get know, here. I know, I know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a farmer driver here. Yeah. I drive at about 45 miles an hour everywhere I go. Why? Just because I like seeing the sights. Man, it's gorgeous right now. The crops, the barley is just gorgeous. The hay is coming down for second crop. Uh, well, meanwhile, I'm sitting here sweating bullets, worrying whether or not I'm going to have an hour to fill. And you're out sightseeing? That's not fair, I'll tell you that. It's a pretty day. It's not pretty hot. It was a little bit cooler yesterday. It was nice. But then that wind caused a lot of dust and everything else. It is, but it sure beats the tar out of 103. Um, But with the heat and with the wind comes a big danger of fire. It is, and it's scary right now. We've had two or three fires, well, four fires that I know of that are already hitting some areas. Really? Um, we just had this one up by Preacher Bridge again the other day that burned up uh, Bear Track Williams and some of that area up there. And that's an access spot for fishing. and um, So, I mean, it, it makes you pretty concerned because it is so stinking dry out there right now. And um, people just got to be extremely cautious right now. You know, little fires aren't really that bad because it helps regenerate the, and stimulate the soils and you get as long as you don't get some evasive plant coming back in there and taking its place. But a lot of times it makes the habitat 
come back better, but when you burn off 300,000 acres of it, yeah, that's yeah. the issue, you know. Well, I, to be very honest with you, I do not want to see another devastating fire like we had two years ago. No, me neither. And, and I'm going to be very blunt. I do not understand why the uh, grass can't be utilized because it's going to cause problems beyond reproach. It could be grazed, it could be minimized, and we wouldn't have the danger of those fires. I just think the management has been very poor. Yeah, and we really don't have anything to do with any of that. I know you so. don't, but I'm stating my opinion. Yep, that's fine. I'm stating my opinion. But what you said is 100% right. Heat and fire danger is extreme right so, now. So when you're out there, be really cautious. Uh, we want to keep our hunting areas open and uh, just uh, don't park your vehicle on dry, tinder, tinder dry glass. You know your catalytic converters are hot. Be cautious with your uh, fires and... Uh you know, just just do the things you know you should be doing. You know, when you talk about this uh, with the heat and the fire danger and everything, <clears throat> uh, are you, on behalf of the fishing game, do you publish any rules of do this, don't do this type thing, or do you leave that up to the Forest Service and also the BLM? Forest Service and BLM. We I try see. to help get that message out once they, they come out, but that's really their call because they manage the federal lands, and so um, and we try to manage the wildlife life on them, but um, we definitely try to get get the information out and help because we do have a vested interest in, oh, absolutely. in it all, but you know, one thing I was going to jump to a little bit, just because of all this heat, the lack of winter precept, we're really, we're struggling right now on uh, on fishing. Really? It is. It's it's been it's terrible. Silver Creek right now is running at sixty five percent of normal for this time of year. The big wood is really low. Uh, water temperatures are up in, in those stretches of the stream. Little Camas Reservoir is on salvage. We're looking. We're closely watching Magic, uh, the Big Wood River below Magic Reservoir, Thorn Creek Reservoir. They could go on salvage any day. They're not on there now. Let me, let me ask you to explain something. When you use the word salvage, what are you referring to and how? What I'm saying is the water is so low that the dissolved oxygen... I'll give you a little bit of a, a lesson here. Dissolved oxygen, fish breathe underwater. Right. When, uh, when you get a lot of algae blooms, well, hot water does not hold this very much oxygen in it. If water's really warm, it can't absorb the oxygen cells very well. Another thing that happens is you get a lot of algae growth in warm water. Mm -hmm. When the algae grows and then it dies, decay takes oxygen out of the water. Uh -huh. When that happens, those fish start dying. And so when we get high temperatures, low pools of water, the fish can't breathe and, and they start getting other diseases can enter in and th things like that. So what we try to do is we put these areas on salvage to allow anglers to go in there and get the fish out of there before they just go belly up. So basically kind of a open season type thing. Yeah, it's an open season. You just can't use dynamite like you like to fish with and you can't use electricity <laughs> and you can't use poison. I've you can, never done that. You can use pitchfork. Yeah, I can really? see it on your face. But the water is that low in some places. In some places. Well, the other ones that we're really watching, I, I mean, those are the ones that are really closely watching. But, I mean, we're, we've got a lot of concerns about the Little Wood Reservoir up there above Cary. Magic Reservoir. Well, I've got Magic over top. The Magic Reservoir itself, not just the big wood below. Right. But Magic itself. Uh, Roseworth Rose Reservoir over by Rogerson, Oakley Reservoir down south. It's getting so low that we're really concerned about it. We're now, when you say so low, I mean, how many feet, if you will, of water has it gone down? Well, uh, it, you know, I was talking to Doug McGargle this morning about yes. this, and I haven't seen the lakes myself. All I know is Oakley was really low this spring really? when I was down there. Yeah, it didn't ever came to full pool. Uh, anywhere close to full pull, um, probably not even half pull hardly. Mm. And so when you you start having those drains on those reservoirs, it really can, and you have continued hot temperatures and stuff like that, it can really have an impact on your fisheries. But now, really, when you come down to push and shove, Kelton, we're not looking at anything extreme as far as summer weather. I mean, we always get a hot spell every summer. We do, but it, the thing that's really whacking us right now is we didn't get any winter. That's true. That's you true. know, the only reason the Snake River is running so good
good is because uh, our, our friends and family over in south southeastern Idaho got a lot of snow yeah. up in the mountains, and so it's it's been able to keep the the tw- you know the Twin Falls Canal Company and all those people that irrigate out of the the. Uh, Snake River, we've got plenty of water, but it's the local stuff that's really been impacted, these local reservoirs and streams, and that's what really impacts our English around here. All right, let me do a commercial, and we'll come back. I want to talk to you about, uh, you don't tell me that more people are poaching, are they? Is just, I don't know that there's more. Well, there's got to be because there's more population. Okay, we'll get into that in just a minute. Harris Plumbing NG for all your plumbing service needs. One call, that's all. They can do the job reliable, responsible, and professional. Absolutely the best. Very efficient and respectful of you and your home. Harris Plumbing NG, 431-8633. And don't forget, they've done all our plumbing needs and service needs right here at my house. They are the best. Nathan Harris Plumbing NG for all your plumbing service needs. 431-8633. You got that smirk on your face. Why? I was just, I don't know. I Sometimes don't know. your mind wanders. Your mind is in uh, probably Flagstaff, Arizona right now. Well, I would never go to Flagstaff. Okay. <laughs> Not right now. Not right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about these? Uh, this article you've got here? Poached Lake Creek Beer. Well, we... It, this is a tough deal. Um, we've had this spring. We've had two animals that have been poached. We had a pronghorn. Um, well, the problem is, is it was just right at birth or just before birth of their fawns. Um, we had a pronghorn antelope that was shot out by Castle Ford. Um, it had uh, two fawns in it, and we found the fawns. Um, they were stillborn, and then the doe was killed. Um, just kind of a just don't even understand why any of that happened. And then we had another one up here in Lake Creek. We had a doe um, that was giving birth when she was shot. Oh, wow. And uh, what has happened on that one is up in the Ketchum area that uh, I was trying to find who it was. It was the Humane Society of the United States and the Humane Society Wildlife Land Trust gave a thousand, I mean a $5,000 reward for information to information leading to the conviction of the per- per- person that was involved in that. Oh uh, and so we're just trying to make people aware. You can also call the CAP hotline and be eligible for other rewards. Um, the CAP hotline is 1-800-632-5999. It's just, you know, this is, I've seen poaching. Some of these really bother me when they're early in the spring prior to fawning or during fawning. And, um, you know, they're bad enough when it's late in the fall and the meat's even taken, but it's still... Uh, you mean they didn't even take no. the meat off of these animals? So, oh, goodness. So one interesting thing is, is we've got this call. we got a contact on the pronghorn out here. Right. We were able to get a search warrant. We go in there, and it wasn't the pronghorn. It was another pronghorn. Oh, really? And so we actually found another case that had taken place that we didn't, weren't even aware of because of information so people's calls are critical for us i mean we're, we're low numbers of people and if you want to protect your wildlife give us a call if you know information you're eligible for between two to five 250 to 500 dollar rewards on most big game cases uh, on trophy species that grow up for over a thousand um, a lot of times there's added money because of different cases and the interesting thing about this zeb though is about half the time when people call on cap they don't want the reward. They just want to do the right thing. Well, no, well, let's talk a little bit about this poaching. I mean, uh, are the rules, are the laws, are the fines, are they tough enough that they are not uh, stopping it altogether but inhibiting this type of activity? Name one law or fine or crime that is. Okay. Uh, I mean, that, that's the tough part. I mean, you've got so many other crimes. What is the fine, by the way, normally? You know, it, it typically around 500 to $1,000. Well, why can't we yes. make it 5000 Well, because you've got other crimes that are taking place that are against humans that aren't that high. Oh, my goodness. And so, I mean, that, that's the hard part because it, it's just trying to find that. And a lot of times our, uh, the people that are convicted of poaching violations are... Typically, it's not just once. What do these people say when you confront them and they're caught red-handed, per se? What do they say for excuses? I mean, there must be some kind of a generalized thought there. I just did it. 
Really? Just did it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you just did it. You know, with her, you know, you get... Just pull out the gun and some, shot yeah, it. Yeah, you get some crazy stories once in a while, so I need food. And they're driving okay, around no. an expensive oh. pickup, and they're scared. Yeah. You know, that's the thing about poaching anymore. I mean, I understand where people say, well, yeah, if they're utilizing the food, the meat from the animal, and stuff like that, well, you got to come to think about gas is at $3 a gallon. Yeah. Um, a rifle's $500. Ammunition's, you know, $30. Uh, the pickup's twenty, thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, or, or an old beater clunker truck, you know. I mean, you still got two or three thousand dollars on. You can go down to your local food banks or any of these other areas, and you can. It, it's cheaper. That's the most expensive money meat you can base on again. Absolutely. You know, because I mean, buy chicken. Yeah. Um, you know, something that's cheaper. <laughs> but um, you know, po going up in the hills and driving around and. It, that's just a thing of the past. I mean, you know, in the old days, you'd see that ranchers and stuff like that. Maybe people that they did that in their backyard, and and you can't justify it, but you can justify it more in, now than people driving around. And, and the nice thing about it, most of the time, they're not poaching does and stuff. They're poaching the twenty, thirty-inch bucks. Yeah. I mean, we've had we've had instances where kids over in Soda Springs had a case where kids were just driving around shooting deer and sawing the antlers off so that they could sell it for horn weight. We've had other cases where kids, you know, it, it, you just you just don't know what goes through their mind, bored, and uh, they just lack of respect. Absolutely. Uh, urban wildlife, you've got a category here that I'm sure I already know the answer to this, but you've probably got a lot of people going up in the South Hills or anywhere else and seeing a fawn and bringing it home. Well, we, we do have that, but I was thinking more about you when you were younger. Urban, weren't you urban and wild? You had to no, throw I, that in, no, didn't you? No. <laughs> urban wildlife. No, no I've been a farm all my life. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, you're a rural wildlife. Yeah. Um, no, uh, urban wildlife. Moose. We've had two moose downtown Burley, had a tranquilized one over by the high school. Really? We've had another moose that's been hanging out in Kimberly, got tired of Kimberly, walked down to uh, 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 Twin Falls Falls, hung out down there for a couple of weeks, wandered around, people would be out there, you know, trying to get their boats ready to water ski, the moose get bored, walk right to the middle of them all, uh, just lower his head and just keep going. He didn't charge him, but he wasn't going to turn either. Um, he finally took off, and he actually crossed the road down here not too far south. Uh, so they really don't have any fear of the people at all, right? Some of them don't. This young bull, he's, he caused a lot of hate and discontent for about a month. Really? And we was finally able to get him out of there. Lots and lots of deer this year um, in the valleys. Um, you know, we've got over in Twin Falls and, uh, you know, even around the edge of Burley, we've had pronghorn coming in just south of the school over there. Um, there's just a lot of animals that are down in the valleys right now. Why? I think you've got a couple things. It's increasing populations of, of wildlife in those, those areas, and um, we've had some really good fawning years. Uh, overall numbers are increasing, and uh, there's good habitat. Yeah, there. It's I mean, if I'm a big old fat bull moose. Uh, there's a comment there. Okay, I know. Okay. But hanging out at Murtaugh Lake would not be that bad no. because I've got an alfalfa field to That's go right. eat at. Right. I can go over and get a little barley. Yep. You know, it's starting to harden up now, so. Um, it's probably not as their favorite treat right now. It'll look dry, you know. <laughs> they can get into the cornfields, and it's cool. There's water. They're not getting harassed by, it. well, some of these places they get harassed by people, but, you know, it's just a, one of those phenomena we're starting to see is just a lot more critters around town. Well, you know, you mentioned, like, the deer and the pronghorn antelope and the moose, etc. but, you know, I'm surprised that you didn't mention that there's been an increase in sightings of, like, cougar in the uh, urban areas. You, you know, uh, we do. We have and we always will as long as there's game in those areas. You know, a couple of years ago we had a mountain lion that was hanging out pretty good uh, right there by uh, the Boy Scout Center in uh, Twin Falls down there in Falls um, because there's that alfalfa field out there by DMB and so the, right. the, yeah. the deer would come out there and the cat at night, it was not uncommon when I was coming home at night, sometimes I'd drive that direction instead of jumping on the interstate, I'd just drive through there and you'd see that cat, I, once I did, but then other really? people, we had a lot of other sightings of that cat, of cats in that area, but they follow all these riparian zones, I mean, you've got these uh, canyons and these corridors, the Snake River Canyon, in places like that, and if you've got food to eat, 
they're going to follow them. Are there more cougars in this area than there used to be, let's say, five or ten years ago? Boy, right. you guys kind of keep know, a count number on those at all? It's tough. When, when I lo start looking at the overall harvest, you know, people are going to say, oh, yeah, you know, I, personally, I think there's a lot less cougars than there were in the, like around uh, the winter of 92, 93, we had just major, we had that really horrid winter where we had such a high deer di mortality, a lot of deer die off. We had more cats around Idaho than any other time, pretty much, really? because we, well, we had a high food po population. You know, there's lots of lots of food out there for them, and that's what drives predator populations. If there's food for them, they have a higher a higher uh, uh, pup for cat survival, you know, or kitten survival, because there's plenty of food. The mothers lactate better. They have enough enough feed to keep them going. And so uh, when you've got really high uh, deer population, cat populations have a tendency to increase. I, I don't know that we have a lot more, but we do have cats. We've never reached quota in 55 or 54 of these units down south on our hunts, and we have uh, like a five or six female quota down there. And so we're not killing a lot, um, but... Uh, those are one of those things that are t you can't just jump in a helicopter and count cats. Yeah, but I would imagine also, as wary as they are, uh, it's not an easy animal to see, observe, and count in the first place, is it? No, well, we can't count. We, yeah. we, we basically manage populations by size of cats that hunters check in. And the mm -hmm. way I see that is, if we get a whole bunch of young kittens turned in, uh, people shoot them and have younger cats, you know, uh, 60 to 100 pound females or males and stuff like that. That's a lot of young population, and we're not seeing any old ones. It means we got a, you know, we got a real young population, and we're basically hard. If you're not seeing any young ones, and they're just all old, you know that you don't have a reproducing population. Mm -hmm. And so, it, it basically, we take all the facts and figures on the age because we pull a tooth out of all the cats that are killed, and uh, we age them, and it kind of gives us an age class. That way, we can make sure that. We're hoping to get about a third, a third, and a third. So you've got different age groups. Let me do a quick commercial and we'll come back. Kelton Hatch, Idaho Fish and Game. Calls are welcome, 436-2244. Hey, don't forget, Sugar Bee Growers introducing Preaxor from BASF, the newest form of chemistry for sugar beets to fight disease and potentially increase yield and sugar content of your sugar beets. Preaxor contains headline and a new compound called Zemium that also provides excellent control of powdery mildew. As I said with the application of VASF's Preaxor, 45 to 60 days prior to harvest, you have the potential of higher yields and more sugar content in your sugar beets. Contact your local Ag Chem supplier or get a hold of my friend Ron Ellis at VASF 431-6776 or Tim Perry at 844-0682. VASF's Preaxor for your better sugar beets. Real quick, we've got about three minutes left here in this segment before we have to take a break. Kelton, uh, I kind of jumped ahead probably too fast when I was starting to talk about newborn animals. Now is the time to say, leave them alone, it correct? Is. You know, we've got a ton of fawns out on the ground right now. Um, you know, we've been getting lots of hawks and, well, mostly owls. We're starting to see more hawks coming in. If you see, if, if a big windstorm comes along, you have a, a young hawk, some type of young raptor in your yard underneath the tree, yeah. the mother's going to take care of it. They're going to take care of it. You, you know, if it's injured, you can give us a holler. But um, it's just, it's one of those things. Well, I think I may have, did I tell you this story? We had a guy that had, he had called, and he says, I got a pronghorn with me. A pronghorn? Pronghorn fawn. In his pickup. In his pickup. Mm -hmm. And he says, I located it. It um, didn't have a mother. And it's like, uh, he explained things. And we said, well, no. The mom knew where that was. You didn't find a dead. It's out in the middle of nowhere. You're out on a dirt road where you found this. I said, it's fine. The mother just left it there. It's gone off forage and we'll come back and nurse it. Well, so we would really like you to take it back right to the exact location. Well, it's 100 miles away, and I, we said, well, um, it really needs to go back there. Absolutely. And so the guy drove back there, dropped it off. He called us back, and he says, well, I'm really glad I listened, because he says, I dropped that fawn off, walked back to my truck, drove down the road, you know, just a little bit, because I wanted to make sure. He said the mother showed up, the fawn jumped up and nursed. You and know, it's just, 
nature, guess what? These critters have been around here for millions of years without us. Absolutely. They don't need help on 95% of the time. If you find a dead mom laying there and the fawn sitting there, yeah, maybe you pick it up or give us a call then. But yeah. other than that, you really don't need to. You know, how many years have you been doing this program? And how many times have we mentioned if you go out into the uh, wildlife areas and find babies or newborns, leave them alone because their moms know where they are and know what they're doing. How come people can't understand that? I, 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 evidently, they all don't listen to you. Do they want them to bring them home and, <laughs> and have a pet? We've had lots of instances like that. We had a, a there's a... A uh, car lot over in southeastern Idaho <laughs> that we found out a lady had like four fawns that she had picked up and bottled oh, them no. and they're running around in there. It was a kind of a rodeo without a rope trying to catch <laughs> fawns running through. <laughs> well, they were young deer at this time just trying to get them out the gate, but we finally got them out. Yeah. So, but I mean, yeah, w there's all kinds of different things that happen. We had a guy that actually raised one up north and then it uh, became a buck. And it wanted to breed with all the bikers. Oh. And so it got really bad because it would start taking people if it wouldn't stop. It would got real aggressive toward bicyclers up there in Sun Valley area. So uh, you just don't. I mean, they, they mature. They turn into they, they're wild animals. Absolutely. Hey, don't forget the Lincoln County Fair and Rodeo. And this weekend, they're going to have their big ranch rodeo as a kind of a kickoff to all the other activities going on next week at the Lincoln County Fair and Rodeo. Don't forget, on Saturday night, 7 p.m., the ranch rodeo, team branding, team doctoring, working ranch horse, trailer loading, snubbed up bronc riding. We ought to snub up old Kelton. Hey, I'll tell you what, it's going to be a lot I'm of a fun. Snubber. Uh, you're a snubber, huh? Lincoln County Fair and Rodeo. And next week, all kinds of activity for the whole family, including junior rodeos, horse pulling, antique tractor pull, IMPRA rodeos, and much, much more in show shown at the Lincoln County Fair and Rodeo for 2014. Don't you miss it. We're going to send it over to our main studios. We'll be back in three minutes. I got to tell you that during the breaks, we try to converse about what's going on and uh, find out about how Kelton's doing and his family and everything. And I had just turned the microphone on, and Kelton reached out like it with his big bare paw and knocked it over on this marble top of this table, <laughs> but knocked my headsets right to the floor. Thank you very much. Just trying to keep you awake. Yeah. Keep me awake. Keep he you shattered awake. my eardrum. <laughs> um, right now, control hunts. Uh, what's going on with the second draw? Well, it, it, this has kind of been a rodeo without a rope. I don't know whether you, uh, you had heard about what went haywire. I did not. That. What happened is we had um, a bunch of young kids got tagged before okay. they were eligible. Oh. Because what had happened, you knew the legislature had changed it that uh, 9 and 10 year olds, right. I mean 10 and 11 year olds would be able to hunt big game this year. Absolutely. And yeah. in our rule books it said you cannot apply for these tags until you're 11 and you turn 12 during that hunting season. Ooh. But the legislature had changed that rule this year, and so a bunch of people decided, well, then didn't read that reg, and they applied. Well, uh, we had 280 kids that drew tags that were ineligible oh because they were young. And the reason they were able to is because someone who had forgotten to... Um, we've been letting 10, 9, 10, 11 years old to apply for tricky tags. Right. Well, so in the system, it said 9, 10, 11 year olds could apply, so it didn't catch them on our scan uh, because we didn't change it for the big game, so we forgot to change that oh, on no. the big game, so we had 280 of these tags. We had a second drawing because what had happened, there's a lot of people who were upset about uh, that, which I, I definitely understand because a lot of people put in for those tags, they really want to draw them, and then we uh, we had that happen. The, the, the director decided to allow the youth to be able to keep the tags as long as they were going to be of age by the time the hunting season started. Okay. And then we issued another 280 tags. In addition to In the addition ones that were already there. Drawn. Okay. And so we separated those out. And any, any unit, like down here in 54, if a kid had drawn that but wasn't eligible, another tag went in. And we just drew that from the original people that put their names in oh and so you couldn't reapply but you could uh so we got those all taken out people have been notified of that um 
And so now you have to get your tags. If you drew, you have to get them picked up before August 1st. If you don't get them picked up, then they go back in for the second, second draw. No, go in for the second draw. Okay, now I'm a little bit confused. Okay. Okay, now help me. I forgot, it wasn't anybody's fault uh -huh. but my own, uh, back in June, to I apply. forgot to apply. And so are you saying that I have perhaps a renewed chance if I went and got my license and applied? You do, because okay. we usually have about 20% of our tags that aren't picked up. Okay. Uh, people don't pick them up. And so beginning August 5th, we go in for the second draw where you can reapply. We've got a list of tags that are left over uh, that people didn't come and buy before, you know, the end of the month and then you can reapply for those, and that goes from the 5th to the 15th, and then the draws will be around the 20th or the 20th. Okay, so now I want to just say this for the benefit of me and others out in the audience. If you were like me and failed to remember to take care of this business... I, I won't even touch that one, but yeah. Uh, I know, thank you very much. <laughs> but if you failed to remember to uh, initially put in for the draw in June, uh -huh. and possibly like me, didn't even get down and get your license, I forgot, uh, now you can still go to Sportsman's Warehouse. You can still get your license. You can go to Cal Stores. You can go to any of the any of the and you can put account. in at the vendor, right? You can. You can go okay. to you know we got right. a bunch over there in Burley Unit 54. We've got you know Cal Stores. We've got Mavericks. We've got okay. uh, you know True Values. There's a bunch of stores over there in the Burley area, okay. and uh, all through there or in Twin that you can apply. But for nothing is going to take place until August 5th. It, you, you won't have the list until around August 3rd of the tags that weren't purchased, and then August 5th you can start applying. Uh, those drawing odds are a little tougher, but you know you can put in, or you can have the opportunity to uh, to. Uh, uh, just do a general hunt. I was also going to touch on, you know, we've changed this down here, this unit 54 to an unlimited control mm -hmm. hunt. We went from, uh, I, I, we've talked about this in the past because when I first moved here about 10, 12 years ago, we only had about 300 people hunting deer down there with bow. Last year was over 900. With the unlimited control hunt, what an unlimited control hunt is, is if you put in for it, you draw it, but it's a controlled hunt, so you, it's not a general tag anymore, so that's the only unit you can hunt in. We had about 400 people, 420 people oh, draw wow. that. So it cut the number of hunters roughly in half, and that's exactly what was after. So I think you're going to have a lot better experience if you're bow hunting down there. The only problem is, if you didn't apply the first time, that does not go on the second draw. You have to apply for that on the first go-around, those unlimited controls. But I think that's going in the right direction. For that unit 54, um, I think it's going to help increase the overall deer quality, and I know that it's going to increase uh, the quality of the hunt because there's not going to be as many people. Well, you know, and I'm really glad that you mentioned this because uh, I'm the one that forgot, and it does give me a little bit of a respite and a chance that I could still draw up here in 54 or whatever. You could, uh, yeah. because I'm sure there'll be a, a few few tags left over. The yeah. line ups are going to be a lot yeah. tougher. But yeah, I understand that. But at least it makes me feel better that I still have an opportunity. Okay. Uh, I don't understand what this next little section is. Wildlife hazing. What do you mean by that? Well, that's a job that you could do. What does a hazer do in bulldogging? Well, he keeps the steer lined out so that the bulldogger has a good chance of getting hold of the steer and tipping him over on his side. Right. So what we do with... Uh Wildlife hazing is we try to you use run up alongside of an elk and bulldog. Elk and bulldog. You know, okay. we try we haze them out of hay fields and corn fields. Really? And we've hired a guy. Um, we're trying a, a new technique here. Hire, hiring uh, uh, herders. <laughs> we've got one that's up in the Fairfield area, and what he does at night is he goes out and harasses elk in alfalfa fields. Really? And it's, we're hoping it'll save us a few hundred thousand dollars on depredation claim. Because mm. we get, you get, you know, I mean, anybody that's got a little bit of ground and stuff like that, and you get two to five hundred elk standing in it, they can do a lot of damage well, yeah, really quick. And, and, and the so price I hate today, you can't afford that. Two hundred dollars a ton yeah. for feeder quality, you know, and, mm. you know, so... Um, so we've got, uh, we just, it's a brand new program we started this year, it's kind of interesting, just wanted to mention to you, it's one of those programs that we do that doesn't get a lot, well, it's the first year we've really done it, but it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it all works out, because, you know, it, 
it'd be kind of a fun job for a kid, you know, to get up, go out, chase critters around all night. You know, I was going to ask you something. Do uh, you think the general public really understands all the different things and items that you're involved in on behalf of the fishing game? I, I, I guarantee they don't because it's just... There's so many. Do you weird publicize this? Is we it on your to. website, or what do you do? Well, we try to put out YouTube videos. We try to put out articles. It just depends on what the papers pick them up because we really don't have a form to get them out. We I send see. them out on news releases and stuff like that. Talk about things on the radio, but you know, there's just not really a good medium for us to get it to everybody anyway. And so, uh, just a lot of a lot of different little things that we do, though. Now, what about this one? Uh, I tell you what, I'll do a quick commercial and we'll come back and talk about the drought impacts. Maybe you had something yeah, else on that. Yeah, we kind of whacked that. I mean, pretty good, but we can, we can touch no, it. No, we've got a more. caller on the phone. We'll take their call and then I'll do my commercial. Sounds good morning, good. caller. You're on the air. Go ahead. that on the air. Go ahead, sir. What about the regulations and all this information coming out soon? He said, I think. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I missed the whole question. Uh, uh, my, my, microphone, my earphones aren't working. Are they so working now? They are okay. now. Okay, good. Uh, he was talking about new regulations and all that information coming out in, in this time slot, is, or is that... Uh, well, pretty much all the new regulations came out July 1st. Uh, we changed... Uh, there was a few things that the legislature changed this last year. They uh -huh. uh, well, some of the trespassing rules um, on how uh, private property is to be marked, and um, that uh, landowners are able to outfit on their own private property if they want, and then the the youth being able to hunt. And what about, are there going to be any changes, in your opinion, as far as uh, bag limits, uh, limits on anything? Is it going to stay pretty much the same? You know, I think things are going to stay pretty much the same on most of those. We just had a commission meeting, and we're, we're sending out our initial stuff on uh, sage grouse hunting and things like that. Um, we'll probably have another hunting season on that. I know that you and I have talked about that a little bit, but, you know, I'm really an advocate of having a harvest on sage grouse myself. Uh, the few birds that wi uh, hunters take are minimal. Um, they don't have an overall impact on, on the birds. But the thing is, is that it, it's like anything else. If you, ha if you have a vested interest in it, it makes you more interested in that animal. If you, if you put it up on a shelf and it's preserved, Nobody gets to the point that they really care about it. I can understand that vein of thought. However, uh, right now, I'm very concerned about uh, rural communities. I'm very concerned oh. about rural life in general. I think all and I'm very concerned about the government imposing more restrictions through an Endangered Species Act that would be very prohibitive. However, I understand what you're saying about a vested interest because look what happened with Ducks Unlimited. Oh, it is. I, you, you know, that's... That. It really scares me to take that off because right now, if you if you de if you drop hunting seasons on sage grouse, your general public that live in the city just wouldn't care about sage grouse anymore yeah. because they can't hunt them. The sportsman would would lose interest in it because, and it would end up falling just on the back of the rural rural people that it could affect. You know, on your BLMs and your grazing allotments and stuff. Right now, we've got a whole group of people that are really concerned about it because they love to hunt sage grouse. So, I mean, we get 75 volunteers a year. It's one of mm -hmm. our highest volunteer projects for people to go out and count birds on sage grouse flats to, to document the number of birds out there. And it's just because people have a vested interest and love to, love to see the birds. Don't forget Redder Showcase 2611 Overland and Burley this week and next. Listen, Kelvin, this is for you. Redder Showcase is going to be having their annual tent sale. But for your convenience, due to the fact that it's kind of hot outside, the tents are going to be inside, and they're going to have all the great savings right inside the store underneath the tents. That's right. They're going to have all kinds of great money-saving ideas on Whirlpool, Maytag, Amana Appliances. And don't forget, too, 12 months, same as cash on approved 
credit. All these are made in America at Rudder Showcase, 2611 Overland in Burley. And don't forget, they are the winner of the Best Appliance Store for 2014. Stop in and see them today. Rudder Showcase with their big annual tent sale inside because it's hot outside. Redder Showcase 2611 Overland in Burley. Time for the weather real quick. Brought to you by Scarrow's Meats. 331 North Road, Jerome. Selling taste one bite at a time. 324-7657. Locally owned custom meat processor for over 20 years. You gotta try their marinated tri-tips. Absolutely phenomenal. Scarrow's Meats in Jerome. Here now, Michael Rogers Weather. Thank you, Michael. Brought to you by Scarrow's Meats, 331 North Road, Jerome, 324-7657. Selling taste one bite at a time. Uh, cleaning up Anderson Ponds. What does that mean? Well, I don't know how many of our listeners over here go fish down in, in Hagerman, but it, it's kind of an interesting thing. I didn't know they were called the Anderson Ponds over there. Well, we've got Oster Ponds and Anderson Ponds. Oh, I see. If you go to the kind of the south... Um, those are the Osters, and if you go to the north, those are the Anderson Ponds. And so the Anderson Ponds, last year we started on those, we drained three of the ponds, um, filled all the carp, um, because carp are like pigs, and they wallow around out there, and they turn the water crappy, and then yeah. we just don't have good survival on the fish, but they're small enough ponds that we can pretty well manage. And so we was able to drain them. We've got good uh, uh, bluegill populations booming in both of those. I read of those. someplace recently that uh, there's been a big push to re-implement and re-institute the media here in southern Idaho, right? Well, it is. It's because it's just one of those fish. It's a fun it, fish to it, catch. It is. It's a, it's great for kids. Yeah. You can Absolutely. go down, put a little bobber on there, put a little beadhead jig on there, yep. and just catch the devil out of the little bit. And when they hit that hook, they just love the flutter and jump and everything else. And, and kids yep. have a ball. Yep. So, um, we, we've got uh, bluegill in there, we've put, got some bass going in those, but now we're trying to clean up the other ponds, the main Riley Pond that is right there when you pull in by the bridge, um, it's completely drained right now. Um, we had a big blowout on a ditch and it pushed a lot of sand and sediment, several thousand tons, into that pond. and, and it, it's primarily for waterfowl. Mm -hmm. It's really good for the dabblers, but it's not good for the diving ducks. So we drained it, killed all the carp, um, and now we're dredging it, trying to put some deeper holes in it and uh, so that the ducks can do well. Plus, it's going to make fishing a lot better. We're, we're dredging right along the edge. Um, so we're going to be rotenoning all those ponds, the duck, uh, goose pond, not the goose pond, it's the highway pond and the other Anderson and Riley pond, and then we'll fill them, and next year they're going to be something to some be they'll be beautiful because they'll be clean and carpless. Is there any way to keep carp out of there? I mean, you say carpless, but somebody could go and mess up the whole deal by throwing you know, carp in there. That's one of the issues that we've been having. <laughs> and it, it just about drives me. It's called Johnny Appleseed. Uh -huh. Johnny Appleseed walked around and spread appleseeds all over the country. Yeah. So we've got people that do the same thing with walleye. Mm -hmm. We've got major issues right now. Uh, we're really, really concerned by a lower stretch down by C.J. Strike of the Snake River. They caught a great big female walleye down there. It's one of our only, re we've never had walleye in there. There shouldn't be any walleye in there. And the issue we don't want walleye in there is because that's the only breeding population of sturgeon that we have in the Snake River. And, and they, they eat will. baby sturgeon. They do. They eat everything. Really? Walleye are just, well, you know, they just got a lot of teeth and they're meat eaters, yeah. you know, and so yeah. they, they eat lots and lots of fish, and we're really concerned about that. Um, people will use their minnow traps they'll, from one pond because there's a whole bunch of little minnows there. They'll take them. They'll go fishing. They're supposed to kill their minnows. They're not supposed to fish with live bait, but they like the live bait. 
but then they don't have the heart to kill their minnows when they go home, and they don't want to put them in the refrigeration. They just dump whatever minnows out in that pond that oh, they're well, fishing, yeah. and then those little minnows, they grow up, and they've got a, another minnow that's of their same species, and then they end up having, and that's how we populate lakes and reservoirs around here with uh, carp and Is any other type of, you know, uh, northern pike minnows have been moved around like that. We just, we have a lot of issues with that. That's why we have rules on these ponds. I was going to tell you, last week we ended up giving a whole bunch of citations and warnings to people down at Salmon Falls Creek because they were taking home fish in their live wells. Really? They were alive. Really? We've got a reason for that because we cannot afford to have these fish move from one body of water to another. We're trying to manage, you know, it, we, we came in, the fishing game came in here and they brought in a lot of basically, I classify them as exotics. They're, they're warm water fish. We've got bass, we've got bluegill, we've got, you know, northern pike, we've got uh, crappie and perch. We can't have those in every stream in the state of Idaho. No. And so that's why you have to kill your fish before taking them home. What about carp? I mean, uh, back in the Midwest, uh, in Wisconsin, Illinois, etc., I mean, carp are all over in the Rock River. They're all over the Mississippi. They're just all over. You can buy them in the grocery store. And you can buy them in the grocery store. Basically, when it comes down to the bottom line, what good are they? Are they any benefit whatsoever? They're good eating. They are. You like carp? I, you know, I'm not a big carp eater. I am not either. But I that's why eat. they were planted here. Uh, and really? Uh, oh yeah, w back in the early... They're a European fish, aren't they? They are. They were brought here as a forage fish for the early immigrants and the yeah. people that first moved here because a lot of our other fish couldn't spawn and keep up. You know, you get a, a, about four times, about ten times the eggs out of a carp so they can reproduce faster and than you do out of a trout. And, you know, we have a lot of people here right now that eat carp. Really? It's not enough for the population. We have people that come in and get uh, seining permits for late fall where they can go out and sane carp out of Murtaugh Lake or out of uh, Milner Reservoir, and they'll take them, and then they, they, they butcher them out, and then they that's what they eat all winter. In, uh, in the fall of the year, just before the water goes out of Murtaugh Lake, what you need to do is go over here or somehow, get on the north edge of the lake, and just look down there at about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Literally thousands and thousands of carp, many of which are maybe three, four feet long. Yeah, and, you know, uh, there's a lot of people that that's what they're after because yeah. it's a good source of protein, and it's cheap meat. I yeah. mean, you know, it's white, and when properly taken care of, I mean, they get, I guess they got it. I've eaten some of it. I'm not a huge carp fan, but smoke, I've had smoked carp that was really good. Smoke might be all right, but anywhere else it's got that real watery, fishy taste. Well, you know, we, we cooked a bunch that one year for a fish fry over at the office, and yeah. we made, uh, they made fish patties out of them and then deep fried them. They were actually pretty good. If they were cold, they were horrible, but when they were warm, um, they were quite good. Put a little spice and stuff in them, but... You know, if a person wants to try something different, boy, that's one thing you could fill a freezer with. Hey, we've only got a couple of minutes left. Limited control hunts possible changes. Have we talked about that or not? Uh, limited control. Well, that, we was talking about that unlimited controlled hunt tag. Yeah. Where a lot of people, what they'll do with this, like in the South Hills, they'll put in for the rifle tag yeah. for Unit 54, and if they don't draw, they put that unlimited controlled archery hunt so they can hunt right here in the South Hills. What the what we're scoping right now is we'd like people to go to the fishandgame.idaho.gov website, go to the Fish and Game website, and comment on the commission would like to be able to use that unlimited controlled hunt, and in some areas, not in Unit 54, but in some areas, they'd like to use that as more of a control measure to, to limit the number of hunters in it, and that means by, if you put in for that unlimited control, that's the only hunt you can put in for so you can't put that in for a second choice. It has to be first choice because what's, what we use that for is to try to decrease the number of people because people like hunting general hunts where they can jump from unit to unit to unit. When we put an unlimited control hunt in, usually it cuts the hunting numbers by about 50%. So it's our goal is to reduce the overall numbers of hunters with that. Well, some of these hunts are getting so good, and I can see this happening in 54 in the near future, you know, people because it, it's a fun unit to hunt, but um, if those numbers start climbing again and we get back up to 800, 
you would probably want to move that to a, that unlimited control hunt to your first and only choice so that you have to, and then it would cut it back again. Okay. And so mm -hmm. go in there and comment on that if you're willing to let the commission have that control to be able to do that. All right, Kelton Hatch, Idaho Fish and Game. Stand by. Don't forget uh, your Magic Valley Les Schwab Tire Centers, all seven locations serving you. And serving is the key word, absolutely, with the best tire value promise in the industry. Yes, sir, with all the free services, you won't find a better value. All the tires, all the different uh, tires for your driving needs on your cars, pickups, SUVs, horse trailers, boat trailers, all that you need. Plus, the best in front end alignments, shocks and struts, brake service. Absolutely the best in brake service. And of course, batteries. It's all there, but service reigns supreme with really knowledgeable people like Lane and Rupert, Dave on Blue Lakes and Twin, Mike and Buell, Mike and Jerome, the Twist family in Paul, John on Poline in Twin Falls, and Randy on Overland in Burley, your Magic Valley Les Schwamm Tire Centers. Well, we got through it, and uh, you uh, did a good job today. Well, thank you. A very good job. It. So did you. you. Thank you. He was very cordial. Um, I'll try That's to. Weird. I'll try to make him better next time. <laughs> 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 no. Um, by the way, next time August. Can you believe we're going to be talking about the August fishing game report next month already? You mean the hunting season begins? Yes, it's getting close. August fifteenth. No. Fifteen. No. Really? Oh, yeah. Pronghorn. Longhorn Archery starts August 15th. It's going to be too old. And you've got the uh, Unit 55 Early Velvet Hunt that kicks off. Oh, my For gosh. rifle, for deer. Mm. And you've got, you know, there's a lot of hunts that kick off in August. Yeah, and besides that, hey. it's still fishing season. And here we go, the year number seven. McGargle hasn't asked me to go fishing. Well, yeah, he, he, I don't know what... I think he's got a list of honey dudes. Uh, I see. <laughs> they must be a long <laughs> <They> list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Kelton Hatch, thanks. God bless. Thank you much. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow, 806 Zebeth Ranch on Thursday. Going to be a good day tomorrow. Tune in, 8 to 11, Zebeth Ranch. God bless the way things were, the way things ought to be. See you then.